Hello. Yep, hello. Uh, so, are you ready to go? Woo! Alright. Can we finish chapter three today? Well, we better get started then at this point if we want to actually finish it. <clears throat> it's time. Yeah, so. <laughs> We're gonna be in for the long night, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning to you, Mr. Narahodo. Uh, good morning, Professor. Ready for today's proceedings? No. <laughs> I hope so. I should be. Even if I... <laughs> good morning, my dear fellows. Oh, Mr. Schultz, you're here! Why, naturally. A true gentleman stands shoulder to shoulder with his friends in battle at, at all times. That's why you've barely been at any of these trials whatsoever. Thank you, I really appreciate it. I'll see you there then. Now, Professor, we really need you to remain calm in courtroom today. Yes, do try your hardest not to enter the witness stand un uninvited again. <laughs> Please. Yes, I will. I I realized it was a mistake. <laughs> I, my dear fellows, I must. I, I must. I must. <laughs> <it again. laughs> oh, you're still here, Shums. What's the matter? Surely you overlook so. Surely you overlook so praise, have you not, to be cast in, in my direction? Hmm? Sorry, I don't follow. Must, must I spell it out? I, the great, the great here, luck shows the greatest detective or, or, of worldwide acclamation. I rose at some ungodly hour to be here now, first thing in the morning. A miracle, you must agree. Well, if I must agree, then. But as you know, my sleep is quite impregnable. I was actually a point of full, <laughs> a full gambit of tactics. She pulled the covers off, shook me, poked both cheeks, punched me, and kicked me from the bed. <laughs> then she put a bloody cup of her latest experimental blend <laughs> on my face, and at last I, 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 I was bestirred. Ah, I see. She gave you the go not treatment. <laughs> oh my, Iris has been busy. Iris doesn't have it in her to go that far. She's too nice. <laughs> I should have spread him a fellow scientist, one who will the infinite possibilities of blending tea. <laughs> I'm the one worthy of praise here, not Iris. This is my victory. <laughs> Did I get in? I oh, okay. That's it. What are you buying? <laughs> Sorry to cut in. <clears throat> <laughs> Kirk said, my dear fellow, why the grim expression at a delightfully early hour? Oh, I don't know. Maybe because I've been confronted with the gr with a grimmer expression, hmm? Dear me, are you going to take that insult lie down, Professor? What? What? I don't know! <laughs> Poor Professor. Anyway, here's the paperwork you asked for. What paperwork? Ah, I took the liberty of requesting it yesterday. I think I blended two voices together. <laughs> I, have a, I have a feeling it may prove useful. You wouldn't believe the hoops I had to jump through to get this brought out of, of, the, of the archives. It's, a, it's the professor's uh, autopsy report. That... that mass murderers? Who killed five members of the aristocracy? We, he was found guilty in a close trial ten years ago. Now it was all done under wraps, and he was quickly he was he was quickly executed soon after the trial. It's all in here. I I don't know what to say. Thank you, Inspector. Yes, much obliged, Gregson. Us, us, us slowly lot at the yard are just doing what we can. In the shadows of the great detective Sholmes, of course. Well then, Professor Airbraid, this is it. Today, we're gonna lay it all the rest at last. I wish you all the best of luck, Professor. I suppose... Hey, God. 
wait for it to catch up. There we go. Just there we go. There we go to my light. I suppose he'll be in there today, will he? Trevor. Trevor. Oh. Uh, no, yeah, it was your light. <laughs> yes, we expect the prosecutor to summon him as a witness. Good. I'm still amazed that you managed to find him in just one day. I really owe you both so much. This is it then. The final chapter. <laughs> no. <laughs> Fine, funny. My heart's racing a little. I've never felt this before, actually. This strange foreboding. As if something gone something's going to happen this trial I'm not ready for. But I can't let that distract me from the only thing that really matters. Finding the truth. Also, also thinking about it, for the second half of this case, we might we, we, it might be best to take off the DLC outfits. Oh, okay. Uh, then let me go and turn those off now, then. Okay, go. I'm, I'm sorry. I, I, I'm, I'm sorry, your other honor. We, we had a we were just told to make a quick wardrobe change last minute. Hold on. You did you 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 wish to change clothes in my Sorry, wardrobe. sorry. We we were a little overdressed for today. I'm sorry. Like oh, thinking about it, oh. I realize I don't. I I don't want any of those outfits to do anything funny on serious things. <laughs> okay. Well, it was fun while they lasted, but we're gonna turn them off now, guys. Um, you yeah. should have done this at a home council. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next. All right, run it out. Uh, 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 uh. In the name of Her Majesty the Queen, I hereby declare this court to be in session again, and not a changing room. We resume the public hearing on Albert Hairbrain, here present, who stands accused of murder. Are, are the counsels for the prosecution and defense ready to proceed? The prosecution is ready, my lord. The defense is ready, my lord. As promised, Lord Van Seeks has his apprentice with him. His apprentice with memory loss. If I may, Lord Van Seeks. Yes, my lord. There appears to be someone standing at your side. Ah, yes, my apprentice and assistant. The prosecution believes today's proceedings will be the complexity of this case arise considerably. Thank you. <laughs> I therefore instructed my assistant to attend and ensure the smooth running of this trial. And the smooth running of liquid refreshments by the looks of it. The way he holds himself, the way he moves, it couldn't be anyone else. He's still suffering from amnesia, so there's not really anything we can do at the moment. I know, but, oh, this is so very hard. It would appear the prosecutor has done a fine job of responding to the demands of the court, of, of, of the court made yesterday. I understand you have successfully secured the engineer who disappeared from the scene of the scene of the day in question. Yes, my lord. I intend to call him as a witness shortly. Very good, very good. Now, now then, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, who have been chosen at random to represent the will of the people in this courtroom today. Again, we'll, we'll see how random. <laughs> Are you ready to and willing to proceed? I, I, it's the same trial, so... <laughs> of course, my lord! I'm sure we will all understand the importance of doing our civic duty. I don't so despise deception deceit. I find it so very wearing. To take a man's life with a conjuring trick, it is against the magician's code, not to mention the law. 
<laughs> Any fake scientist should feel the wrath of God if you ask me. <laughs> as soon as I saw him again, I was like, oh no. <laughs> uh, the very message where we say both sides of the fence and I'm a settle on one. Did you? Did you see it? Wasn't it like this in my day? Wasn't like this at all. If all parties are ready to proceed, you may begin, Lord Von Zeeks. Before I do, my lord, there's a report I must read to the court. Papers, please. Thank you. Yesterday, That's at the great exhi <laughs> exhibition grounds, the evidence of the primary importance in this case, the super high voltage entertainment's kinesis machine, which was installed in the experimentation stage, was deliberately destroyed in an explosion affected by an unknown person or persons. It was what? An explosion? This, <laughs> this is outrageous. This is. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, I heard this grave news yesterday. Scotland Yard submitted a report to my office in the, in the evening. I read that the machine was blasted to, sm to, to smithers and the records reduced to ashes in the flames. I have here a photographic print of the scene taken in the wake of the explosion. It shows what little remains of the machine. Those don't look like ashes to me. <laughs> he did. He did to destroy the evidence, did he? That's Ignat Drever. The court will take this print as evidence, counsel. Late yesterday afternoon. The protection for the black machine of the special dispension for scientific equipment act was revoked. Seriously, we really need to find a shorter name for this, please, for the love of God. However, before a thorough investigation could begin, the investigation with the invention was obliterated from existence. As such, this will become a very different trial. It also killed two security guards, but Let's not worry about that. As it stands now, with no evidence to draw meaningful conclusions, the authenticity of the Kinesis machine will remain forever in obscurity. Also, Assistant, do, do you want to move forward, please? Like, no one else can see you right now. You, you, you can move. There's a lot of bench here. This is a I'm nice good. corner. I, I'm good right here. <laughs> hmm. And... Indeed, a most unfortunate state of affairs. However, one thing remains clear. The victim's death was the result of actions of the accused. Of that, we can be certain. For it was the accused himself who was operating the machine and who ultimately caused it to lose control. <laughs> As Lord Von Seeks rightly states, this is a very different trial now. The accused accepts responsibility for his part of the events that transpired. He acknowledges that Mr. Asman died as a result of the accident caused by his machine's malfunction. However, unknowns to the professor, he was being deliberately deceived by a pair of very clever fraudsters. Names, counsel, if you please. The engineer, Egnock Drebber, and the victim himself, Mr. Odie Osman. So what exactly were these two men behind the def doing behind the defendant's back? The defense attempts to expose that information, thus establishing unequivocal innocence of the defendant. Thank you, counsels. The positions of the prosecution and defense have been made cl have been clearly stated. Lord von Zeeks, summon your first witness, please. At once, my lord. The prosecution calls the engineer, Eknok Drebber, to the stand. Hi. State your name and occupation for the court. Name, Enoch Drebber. Occupation. 
hard to pin down, I would say. See that black model go? Yes, I do, sir. I've seen it somewhere before. Oh, you two, I had the exact same feeling. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See, feeling I did. <laughs> Your file indicates that you are currently being investigated in connection with another case. The theft of a waxwork model, is it? A most extraordinary sounding business. But that has no bearing on this trial, I assure you. Cleave it from your mind. Doubt. You're familiar with the public experiment carried out by the Great Exhibition some days ago. The accused super high voltage instantaneous kinesis demonstration. Okay. I really want a word account for how many times we said that during this trial. Good lord. Yes. You could say that. I am aware of it. There was a terrible accident, wasn't there? Papers, please. It was you, Mr. Drebber, who constructed the vast machine used in the experiment. So our investigations indicate. Can you confirm your involvement? Yes, I constructed it in precise accordance with the blueprints, but that's all. Then the court would be very interested to hear your thoughts on the machine, I'm sure. An amazing device, if you ask me. The pinnacle of modern science, making instantaneous kinesis a reality at last. What? Good, good gracious! Do you mean to say that the experiment was 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 bonafide? Is that your, is that your belief, sir? Yes, that is very much my belief. Such a waste that it blew up. Objection. But we already established the machine was nothing more than a prop for an elaborate conjuring trick. Objection. You established nothing of the sort. All that was known during yesterday's proceedings is the same outcome could have been produced by means of stage trickery. The defense merely proposed a method and demonstrated its feasibility. Nothing more. But, but... Touch your there, defense. We're pro we've procrastinated long enough, I feel. Witness, you will now give your formal testimony. About the machine that you've constructed for the purpose of the demonstration at the Great Exhibition. Understood. <laughs> <laughs> I met the young professor approximately one year ago through Mr. Asman's introduction. He pro provided me with the blueprints, and I constructed the machine to his precise specifications. It was no trick. If the whole show was a fraud, it would have required a body double. Tell me, did the victim have a win? All the spectators saw the birdcage appear from their heads and then crash headfirst into the crystal tower. A terrible accident, I grant you. Perhaps the science on which the machine was built was flawed somehow? A, a body double? That goes without saying, surely. I was thinking this last time. I definitely think that th th our double is going to come in from that head, I think, is the big thing. To give the impression that something has moved when in reality it hasn't, it's a basic conjuring principle. The deception cannot be achieved without substituting the original with the fake at some point of the performance. But would I be right in saying we haven't managed to establish anything along those lines? Uh, incidentally, the prosecution has already confirmed that Mr. Anderson had no twin siblings. Hmm. 
It's my understanding that this witness is well versed in conjuring artfulness. But such talents do not indicate that he was actually able to accomplish what he claims. Namely, the construction of what, by all accounts, must have been an extremely complex scientific machine. Whatever do you mean? Yesterday's proceedings brought the true nation of your past exploits to light, Mr. Drebber. Indeed it did, my lord. As a swindler who preys on innocent scientists to elect government grant money through conjuring know-how. Yes, it's true that I possess considerable knowledge of stage magic. But crucially, my scientific knowledge more than matches that of any academic in the field. Investigation of the witness's workshop attests to that claim, my lord. As evidence, the police found a royal so society trophy for the young talent in science there. Yes, that's true. We spot there ourselves. If the hypothesis is sound, it can always be forged into a physical manifestation with significant skill. Sufficient? Mm. Sufficient skill. Though I may have sold the secrets of some deceptive wills to two sniveling, talentless scientists in the past. Would, would you therefore assert that the explosion of the machine was an unfortunate accident, or, of course, a deliberate act of murder carried out by misuse of the science, like the two people on guard up there. <laughs> Counsel for the defense, your cross-examination, please. Yes, my lord. I didn't realize before that he had, like, a long skirt on for, like, his pants kind of deal. I met the young professor of the Did you examine the photo yet? Are these, uh, like, took, uh, took Of the it? new photo? I don't think we... Yeah, I still think, like, this hole is, like, the big thing on this, uh, kind of deal. Um... Uh, Do we examine the new... Yeah. Uh, reactive for confidentiality. Soon on the professor. Death by hanging confirmed on midnight. Uh... I can't find anything out. Mm. Uh... Uh... This lock does look very strong, doesn't it? There's definitely no way you can remove the mask yourself with that, uh, if, if you were to put it on. What a terrible way to treat someone, even a convict criminal. I know, it's starting to make me livid, actually. Mr. Naruto, please. I mean, just think about it. Imagine if you had an itch on your cheek all of a sudden, you'd be utterly helpless! Well, yes, that's true. But I'm not sure that warrants quite so much anger. Oh, alright. Sorry. Uh, anything else? Doesn't look like it. Man. And we already investigated this last time. So I think that's everything new right now. Did you check the cage? The... Oh, uh... Oh, the bird cage. Yeah, we got that. Yeah, I don't think we did this. Look here, Miss Susato. Oh yes, the wood's cracked and broken a little. I suppose because it fell from such a height? Yes, from the height of which the balloon was flying down into the crystal tower below. A fall of about 30 feet, or 9 meters. Even the man inside's tragically dead. Uh, anything else, or is that it? Yeah, I think that's it. Ouchies. Alright. Yo, the ouch. Via the instructions, it was no trick. The whole show thought I would have been the body dumping. Hold it! Of course! That's it! Mr. Asman had a twin! Objection! Perhaps my attention to what I said earlier? Perhaps my learned friend wasn't listening earlier. Mr. Asman has no twin siblings. 
No, I heard you before, but the threat of both hasn't quite left me. The demonstration could have been a trick if there was someone who looks sufficiently like the victim. The Dr. Scythe absolutely ruled out that possibility. Please, Papers, thank you. It is beyond question that the victim himself, Mr. Osmond, did move from the stage to the Crystal Tower. The fingerprints found at the scene may attest to that fact. So it can't have been orchestrated using someone who looks identical to Mr. Osmond, then? What are you thinking, Mr. Naruhoto? Oh, n nothing. Just the idea of someone who looked identical to the victim is playing on my mind. Okay. Hold it! Ouchies. Ouch. It crashed head first, you say? According to the many witnesses reports from the from those there at the time, yes. There it is. Were you not were you not there at the exhibition grounds on that day? Hmm. Unlikely. I rarely leave my workshop. Yet another <clears throat> one of your unique inventions was found at the scene. Well, it was the unveiling of a machine I'd labored over for many months. I saw it clearly with my own eyes. The birdcage plummeting head first into the tower. What a surprise. I believe the victim's neck was broken for the headlong fall, wasn't it? How would you have come by that information? Even an, inf even an inferno recluse like me reads the newspapers, you know. According to the reports, two injuries were apparent on the victim's body. Yes, he had been stabbed in the chest by a screwdriver believed to belong to the defendant, and he'd broken a vertebrae from the result of his fall of a, of a considerable height. Correct, my learned friend has been doing his research, it seems. Do we know which injury was the fatal one? Sadly not. Forensic science is not at the level where such things can be determined. Hmm. What we know is the victim died and sustained both injuries at some point during the experiment. And since he was found in the birdcage with his neck broken... It's obvious that he fell from a considerable height. Hmm, I suppose it's hard to deny. I think I know what it is. It's done this. Uh, birdcage and crash head first, yeah. Because the head first part I don't believe ta links up with the cage we saw. Uh, kind of deal. Because if I go to that... Yep, because it was broken on the bottom! Objection! Sir. We've examined the bird cage that crashed into the Crystal Tower ourselves. As you can see, the cage, which is wooden construction, has the same damage in one particular spot. Following the explosion, it fell some 30 feet into the glass of the Crystal Tower. That level of damage is to be expected, surely. I agree. The damage itself is entirely understandable. What doesn't make sense is the location of that damage. All the breakages in the wood are at the base of the birdcage, not the top! What are you saying? That's the opposite of where they should be! That's right, my lord. The birdcage was at the scene was damaged at its base. So we have reports of the birdcage falling head first into the crystal tower, yet the damage is at the bottom. The only way, though, to reconcile the effect, the two effects is to accept that there were two bird cages in play that day, which at some point were switched. Switched during what wasn't a scientific experiment at all, but an elaborate piece of stage trickery. God. <laughs> Ow. <laughs> no. 
Ouchies. Good <laughs> gracious! Explain yourself, witness! I... Well... If we examine the facts, there's only one logical conclusion we can draw. The damage at the base of the birdcage clearly indicates that it crashed tail first into the tower. <laughs> but multiple witnesses report or its claim it fell head first. The birdcage materialized in the sky next to the balloon flying over the stage following a spontaneous explosion. The altitude of some 60 feet above ground level. Which is approximately 18 me meters. Blech. Then it proceeds to fall 30 feet into the crystal tower in the ensuing deflagration. Witness reports amid such chaos are notoriously unreliable. Attention. But the victim's neck was broken! His neck was broken! Objection! <laughs> he plummeted 30 feet inside a heavy wooden cage. However he fell, it would unsurprisingly find one or two of his vertebrae crushed. <laughs> Cuckoo. Bumps. A, a riveting scientific analysis of the events for the prosecution there. Though to be more rigorous, you were you would have you have to say it was only one vertebrae actually. He wasn't quiet for long. I find it hard to see what's motivating Lord Van Seeks. This witness is clearly a swindler and one who deceived a personal friend of his. If you're going to establish this deception, do it right. Sorry? I feel like that's the undertone here. Ah, yes. And there's one more point the defense appears to have forgotten. It's obviously wasn't a trick, as I said the truth very plainly demonstrates. What? It seems to me that the cross examination had better continue until we resolve this matter. Mr. Drebber, you will you will amend your testimony with details of this truth. Of course, we must treat the matter scientifically, after all. I nearly had him there! His victory yep. his victory Y'all get- no, 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 okay, alright. <laughs> that was his victory dance, it's like- That- <laughs> it's back to <laughs> reset. <laughs> the Kinesis clearly took place because there's nowhere else 30 feet high for the bird case to have fallen from. Uh. Yo, uh, do I have an actual evidence that shows the bull? I. Okay, I think I got stumped on this one too. You have to. Sh it's like the evidence says it's thirty feet high. Oh, okay. You gotta find an actual evidence that says. Well, that. What can show what? What can show that can be thirty feet high? It's one of the things where you already know what the answer is. You gotta find the thing to prove it. Like, to show it. Something that actually shows it being 30 feet high, like, exactly. I feel like it would have to be this! At the, uh... Mm. It, it, shows that, it shows it at an angle. I... Uh, but this is only a sketch on that one. But, but, but does it show the height? Uh, yeah. Uh, like, what is your, what is your thought process on this? My finger is still on the idea that it would be coming out of the balloon, like we said before. Kind of deal yesterday in court. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what do you currently feel shows that? Um... Because I think it would have to be either this or the photograph we have of the balloon. Kind of deal. Well, we'll just try it. Uh, okay, let's try this one. I mean, you already say, so you have nothing yeah. to lose. Okay, not that one. 
That, 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 that. Wait, uh, hold on. That There's is... a hole. Wait, no, uh... I think it's at the back. Yep, okay. <laughs> so I was on the right track on that one. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> 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 no, hold on quick. I need to get ready with a case. Try everything until it works. <laughs> this is a diagram of the experimentation stage and its surroundings. We know that somehow the birdcage appeared mid-air before falling down on the crystal tower. A fall about 30 feet, or 9 meters. However, if you examine the diagram carefully, you'll see there's one other possible location from which the birdcage could have fallen. The same distance of 30 feet. No. Well, it appears that the fence has a possible explanation to put forward. Go ahead, Council. Yes, my lord. Of course. You will indicate the place to uh, to which you are referring on this same diagram. The, uh, the alternative location for which the birdcage could have been. Take that! If it had fallen from here, the birdcage will have plummeted the same 30 distance! That's it. Oh, fuck. No! What the fuck? <laughs> okay, what do you know about the machine? Uh... Oh! 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 Ow! Oh, Ow! Oh, Ow! Oh, Ow! Oh, Ow! Oh. Yeah. <laughs> we save? No. So... Oh, I'm gonna say, oh, so you wanna take that hit forever. <laughs> Whatever, it's better than doing it again. Turn the hell's out of it. Give it up. Objection. Ah, fuck! Am I saying, like, literally right for the stage itself? Uh, uh go up a little more. Try it. Take that! Okay, there we go. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You, you, you had the right idea. You were just you were just too, you were just a little low. It's fu points like that. I wish they had like the reticle to like hey like this is a specific point like kind of deal <laughs> to to do it because it feels like sometimes like it could be counted as this, it could be that, it could be this kind of thing. I feel, like, yeah. I feel it's an issue for some for some some, some evidence with these. Yeah. The place I'm referring to is here. But that's where the birdcage would have been to begin with. Which is exactly the point, my lord. Yes, the birdcage was in the machine on the stage. But what we also need to consider is the height of the stage itself. Go on, Council. It turns out that the experimentation stage was built on a considerable height above ground level. If you look at the diagram, in fact, You'll see it's about the same height above the ground as the balloon was above the crash site. This was, uh, this was one of the things that they did that the game also did kind of get me with. Because I was going off the logic of, I guess, still the teleportation kind of working. Slash, oh yeah, the, the thing of the balloon. The, forgetting, I, the fact, forgetting the fact that, oh yeah, it needs a starting point. Yeah, it's like as soon as they introduce the hole, I'm like, okay, that's how it happened. Kind of deal. <laughs> Oh, wait, right, uh, let's first. Uh... Ouchies! <laughs> Just a Uh... When the experimentation got away, the machine and the birdcage were engulfed in steam. At that moment, the floor of the stage gave way and we, we assume there was a void underneath. This birdcage would be the one seen by the audience! Would have fallen exactly the same distance! Once again, my lord, 
This all points to the fact that there was not one birdcage, but two! Objection! My lord friend has no evidence that the stage had a contrivance of this design. Oh, do we not? <laughs> Some someone is responsible for criminal destruction of the Kinesis me machine itself. True. However, the stage itself still stands. And the mo- <laughs> And take a moment to look at the photographic print of the scene following yesterday's explosion. Guess how the it's going- The first situation made it sound like Cosmo was asking that. <laughs> oh, yeah. We should start Do we not? <laughs> oh, do we not? <laughs> oh, you're embarrassing me in front of my boyfriend. Stop it! Stop it! <laughs> <laughs> also, he is say he has some nerves to steal because he has been staying perfectly fucking still this whole trial. My lord, <laughs> this is fine. <laughs> All right, judge. Um, yeah, my bad. <laughs> good lord, the metal, the metal grill that floored the floor of the machine is undone! Yes, most likely blown open from the force of the explosion that destroyed the rest of the machine. The defense calls for the space below the stage to be investigated immediately! Mr. Trevor! It was you who built the Kinesis machine. Which means that it was you who built the two bird cages that were used to carry out this deception. Whether Professor Hairbray's hypothesis is sound or not makes no difference. Because it's the construction of the machine that matters. A machine designed to take Asmund's life. And lay the blame firmly on the professor's door. Something that could have only been carried out by you, Mr. Eggnock Driver! Oh, he gets he gets two test stamps. Oh shit! <laughs> Please, thank you. It's amazing how you can do that without cutting the cut the cut the, 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 the top the top. Would you like some? No. <coughs> All right, fine then. If my learned friend has reached to the end of the wildest sessions. Hmm. The prosecution would like to crush the defense's argument slowly, but surely. And don't worry, I'm not going to throw the glass this time. I don't want to hit you in the head. You're a good bird, so... Uh, <laughs> stay right there. <laughs> you didn't even drink the bottle. What? <laughs> Your argument fails to hold water on two counts. Two? Firstly... Before and after the experiment, this witness went nowhere near the Kinesis machine. Every relevant member of its staff and the exhibition has attested to that. And I believe the members of Scotland Yard have also been on watch, on watch duty at every public experiment. In other words, Mr. Drever had no opportunity to switch the alleged pair of bird cages. <laughs> But I've already explained why he do it wouldn't need to! The nonsense with the crossbow, that doesn't bolster your case at all. The man who disappeared from the stage and the man who crashed into the tower are one and the same. The forensic investigation scene report is unequivocal at this point. <laughs> and the second flaw of your assertion is the distinct lack of motive. Why would this man have wanted to take the victim's life? He had no reason to. Uh, a uh, motive? Do I think? Do I have to think of everything myself? Unfortunately, yes. Papers. I have here a contract provided by the witness. What contract is this, Lord Van Zeeks? The contract, duh. The contract that involved Mr. Drever entering the victim's Mr. Asmin. It reads. Mr. Drever is to receive 30% of all rem ramifications of the government's grants or other income. 30 per 30%? Such are the very favorable um, contractual conditions. 
but there was but there was one very important provision bolted onto that clause. What provision? Mr. Drebber may only uphold his right on the condition that both contracting parties are alive. In other words, if either of us were to die, the contract will become null and void. So you see, I had nothing to gain from Mr. Asma's death. The diametric opposite, in fact. Uh... Need I say more? The witness had neither an opportunity nor a reason to commit the alleged crime. In short, the possibility that Mr. Drebber has done what you suggest is nil. Uh... <laughs> My poor back. Please, I need a chiropractor so bad. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. It seems that the fit of the ascension was somewhat wide of the mark. Lord Van Zeex, you will submit the contract as evidence, please. Okay, first I want to take a look at that contract. Yes, sir, Mr. Osman. You're fine. Fun labor materials. Mr. Trevor, 60, 30%. It's not a lot. Alright. It's true. Mr. Trevor had no opportunity to switch the birdcage underneath the stage with the one in the Crystal Tower. He couldn't have put on it. And in any case, I have no idea what his motive might have been. There is one aspect of your argument that still holds true, however. There were two bird cages. The prosecution is unable to deny that. So I'm sure you're on the right lines, Mr. Narahodo. And I have no doubt there's other aspects in your assertion that's an undiable truth, too. Well, it would seem... That the defense has no has has no rejo rejoinder to offer. Now I'm not a boo boo. <laughs> well, I must say I'm a little surprised. You appropriate head. <laughs> you. Party pooper. <laughs> <laughs> I came here to testify about the machine I built, and instead, my reputation is defiled. Roxas, that that's the that's the joke. <laughs> but the prosecution's counter has set the record straight. I think it's impossible that I'm the culprit. <laughs> At, or not. <laughs> at the beginning of the trial, we believed that there was only one birdcage. Yet we know now there must have been two. In other words, there was more than one demonstration than we realized at first. I think it's abundantly clear that the same applies to the culprit. Get to the point. The stage demonstration was constructed and set up in entirely by you, Mr. Trevor. Therefore, it's inconceivable that you had no hand in the events that transpired. So if circumstances mean that it's possible you could have carried out the crime yourself, it points to the fact that someone else was involved. Someone else? Counsel, are you suggesting? Yes, my lord! Mr. Drebber had an accomplice! Objection. An accomplice now? Then, well then, I presume you're prepared for what's to come. Now that you're accusing not only this witness, but someone else of the most serious of crimes. These accusations turn out to be false. Then make no mistake. The prosecution will demand an equally serious punishment for your slander. Maybe like six months and then you come back for, you know, no, no charge at all or anything like that. You're going details, details. Did we already do that? 
<laughs> well, Count <Council>. Shut up! <laughs> <laughs> Do you intend to pursue this course and formally accuse another party of involvement in this matter? <laughs> Jason, let's keep up this joke like Cosmo just trying to point out any flaw and like just make it <laughs> shut the fuck up! <laughs> At the moment, this is a little more than a hunch on my part. I don't know if sure Mr. Trevor had an accomplice or he's really the culprit here. Only one way or another, though, I have to make my position clear as a lawyer. So what's my stance going to be? Did Mr. Trevor have an accomplice or not? The defense is ready to name Mr. Drever's accomplice! So, somehow the two bird cages must have been switched. Everything points to that. Yet, according to the coroner's report, that's not a possibility. But that inconsistency itself is a clue. Counsel! Hmm? My lord! You have received a stark warning already. If you are nevertheless determined, then I must now ask you to identify this alleged accomplice by name. So, your answer, please. Who do you claim to have been Mr. Trevor's accomplice? Alright, uh. I think it, it has to be Balazar Balloon, I think, at this uh, point. Uh... Because mm, I'm thinking of just of what, how it was stored in the balloon itself kind of deal. Uh-huh. That would be the, my, my hunch. What is the inconsistency that's, that, that we're trying to figure out? That there's two bird cages, and then if Rebber... If we go on the fact that Drebber did, was involved, he did the one for the stage, but then who was the one to set up the one on the Crystal Tower at that point? And I feel- And we know- And we- And we know this information through- Uh, the bird cages at that point. Uh... And who was the one in the cage? Oh, okay, okay. So we're, we're saying that both of them agreed onto this one. Alright. <laughs> Uh, Jesus! <laughs> <Is this? laughs> That—that's the victim. <laughs> 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 like, he, he, like, he's dead, like, sir. Like, literal, like literally, who? Jesus! Who's that? The man, I swear. <laughs> Judge, are, 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 Judge are I think I'm more concerned that you don't know who these people are. Are you blaming on the Italian? Wait, I, I just want to do this one for fun. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> the prosecution! Los Nazis, it was you! You're the accomplice! <laughs> <laughs> okay, that... I feel like just that, that, at that point he just chucked the bottle on you that time. <laughs> <laughs> I think he, I think he just yeah he would just throw the bottle. Um. <laughs> okay, why? Okay, why do we know that that the body that they found was the same? Uh, because he doesn't have a because of the uh. And yeah, because of okay, the then who her. confirmed it? Jesus! Yep, okay. <gasps> there we go. Balloon man. <laughs> I hey, 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 hey. Okay. <laughs> he was acting kind of sus in last trial, so you, you I know. <laughs> Yo, yo, I can't believe we, we, we were about to hit the fat man thing. <laughs> in the name, the name of the person in question is. What 
what's wrong, my Nipponese friend? Surely fear does not bind your tongue now. It's a little late for that. Of course I'm afraid. After all, naming her in this capacity is definitely going to make waves. A lot of waves. I could very well turn every person in this courtroom against me. I'm sure it'll be alright, Mr. Narhoto. Thank you, Mr. Sato. The enemies always appear as larger than life, but you'll appear exactly the same to the enemy. Alright then. Here it goes. You've kept us waiting long enough. Your answer, Council! Now! The person who conclu colluded with Mr. Drever in order to carry out this wicked crime is Scotland Yard's coroner, Dr. Courtney Scythe! What? What the blazes are you talking about? Dr. Scythe? The head of the forensic team and the coroner who conducted the co autopsy on the victim? That's a big yikes, man. We know that there were two bird cages, so we could have carried out the switch to, com to complete the illusion. The accident happened in front of a huge crowd of spectators, and the area was immediately sealed off. Then yeah, everyone, then everyone, police officers included, were banished to make way to forensic investigation team. When else would the switch have occurred? It could only happen in that team's presence. It's essential that the court determines exactly what happened following the incident. The defense demands that Mr. Sight, that Dr. Sight be summoned to the witness stand to testify at once. That man is just vibing. With his hands <laughs> up. We got a nerve, lad! Standing up there tracking the yard's name through the mud! I, I, I didn't mean to. I know the woman very well. There's no better deed to work worker out there. How dare you call her a criminal? My learned friend's imagination appears to be wider than the East End at night. But the recklessness of your accusation aside, there's another grave problem with your argument. One of one which the prosecution demands you address at once. You sure uh, about that? A grave problem? Shut the fuck up! <laughs> <laughs> Small slap behind the <laughs> No, stop. <laughs> oh my word! <laughs> Who do you claim acted as the victim's doppelganger? What? Hmm. Certainly, if the bird case continued, the body of the victim was exchanged for another. That case must have must also have been close to contain the body. And yet, no missing persons or accidental deaths of anyone even remotely resembling the victim have been reported. Which means there is no <laughs> I saw that fucking comment! <laughs> Wait, this is my chicken nuggies! Hey, bro, can we get chicken nuggies after this? I would not be caught dead in my lifetime going to that- going to those golden arches. You stay away. <laughs> <laughs> they are not- <laughs> They are not for our kind whatsoever! <laughs> <laughs> if I catch you in that golden archway, you, uh, I will, worse what happened, I will do so you much You will only to eat fire. there for a month and then you will think otherwise. Which means if there was no one dead or alive who could have fulfilled the role of the body double for Mr. Osmond. Uh, that's true. My argument there was with the two bird cages. Then there must have been one person inside each. I don't know if I've gotten an answer to this yet, have I? What could reveal the body double sun that was achieved? Uh, I think this is when that, uh, wax figure is coming into play.
Very well. The defense addresses my learned friend's concerns by presenting evidence that reveals the true nature of Mr. Osmond's body double. Good gracious! Ev evidence! I do hope this isn't a um... Filibusting. I do hope this is a filibuster in council. The court is expecting a name. If you think you have re relevant evidence presented now. I stutter. The body double in the birdcage were hiding inside the balloon that was floating above the sage. Which means that any witnesses would have seen them from 60 feet away. So, who was it that appeared out of the explosion some 18 meters above the spectators? Aha! The body double inside the second bird cage was. Take that! We know the victim, Mr. Osmond, was inside the bird cage that was situated inside the kinesis machine on stage. And therefore, he couldn't have been inside the second bird cage. Instead, that contained something else. What has been described as a body double in which what fell from the sky crashed into the crystal tower. Yes, Council, according to your somewhat elaborate version of events. And that body double inside the second bird cage was, in fact. It's alright, Mr. Narhoto. You're ready for this. Just deal yourself and come out with it. Thank you, Mr. Sato. I needed that. As I was saying, the body double inside the second birdcage was, as unbelievable as it may seem, that thing right there! I can't reel this into it! <laughs> <laughs> Wait, how do you do that? <laughs> I love that he closed his eyes like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, I know, I know, I know. Listen, follow, I swear, I swear this all makes sense. I swear, let me, hang on, wait, hang on, wait, hang on, let me finish, let me finish. I swear this all makes sense, this all makes sense. You think I'm stupid, I ain't stupid. You, listen, I swear, I swear, why are you looking at me like that? Don't look, stop looking at me like that. Stop it, stop it. I ain't dumb, come on, man, listen, listen, just, just listen, 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 listen to me. Also, we are assuming that they actually have to go to Miss Tinsel's like, hey, can we borrow this real quick? <laughs> my, you learned, know you... my learned apprentice. Do you see yeah. this shit? <laughs> oh, oh, I'm seeing it. Find it pretty hard. <laughs> find it hard believing it. I'm trying to wrap my head around this fool's ideas as well. Also, how did they get that into here? I know we had a carriage from before. Are we going to set this one on fire, too? I would, I would oh, like Jimmy. that. Wait a minute. There was a carriage in here? We set it on fire? <laughs> we have much to discuss afterwards. I don't think it was even here by now. <laughs> Open your eyes and look into mine, my Nipponese friend. Well, they're open. Now tell me. How you get that in here? <laughs> what are you playing at? Stand firm now, Ryanosuke. This is a time to show your Japanese spirit. As the court will observe, this is a waxwork model. The, a model which, in fact, of the infamous London murderer ten years ago, the professor. Objection. You started by indicting leader of the forensic investigation team as an accomplice of this crime. And now you moved on to indicting Waxworks. Uh, yes, that's about the size of it. But why? And why this Waxwork? It looks nothing like the victim. In fact, it could hardly resemble him less. What possible? What possible justification can you give? You want to know why? Ask Mr. Drever. What? 
Just days before Professor Hairbray performed his public demonstration, Mr. Drebber abducted this model from Madame to spells. Did, did you say abducted? And two days after the incident at the Great Exhibition, he returned it to the museum. Then, the timing. Is this true, Mr. Drebber? Um. 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 At first, I couldn't see why Mr. Drebber had stolen the waxwork model and then given it back. But now the reason is clear. He took it so he could put inside the second birdcage as a body double for Mr. Osmond! Objection! See, my apprentice, I had to learn how to hit the desk and make sure the wine bottle didn't move an inch. It's a uh, detected skin. Are you impressed? No. <laughs> You're having fun being a teacher, Brooke. <laughs> <sighs> Are you hearing this, ladies and gentlemen of the jury? Are you oh, hearing the defense's astonishing proposal? Oh, what's wrong, Betty? Are you angry? I'm, uh, that's my secret. I'm always angry. Oh, that explains the alcohol in your room. <laughs> Sparkling juice. Alcohol? I know where it is. You can't hide it from me. I've been in your office. <laughs> Just shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Let the witness fabricate this vast machine with the intention of deceiving some wet scientist. That he did so in collusion with the country's finest coroner on a public stage in front of a vast audience. And that, to the effect of deception, he used a waxwork model in no way resembling the victim. Are we really to believe this far-fetched tale? What do you decide? Objection! Uh, wait! Yes, if you put it like that, of course it sounds implausible. My lord, I need to speak if you please. Go ahead, Mr. Foreman. <clears throat> oh, it was in my throat. Myself and my colleagues have reached an agreement. Very good. In that case... Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, you will state your, your, your leadings for the court to hear now. Guilty. Dumbass! <laughs> Guilty. Idiot. Guilty. <laughs> Idiot he is. Guilty. Jerk. Idiot! <laughs> uh, that, that wasn't what the scales are supposed to be used for. <laughs> Roxas, I, I got one right here to save my first rodeo. <laughs> so, as indicated by the foreman, the jury has reached a consensus. I knew it was going to happen. We shall get through this, Mr. Naruto, as we always do. And I cover some new troops along the way, I'm quite sure. Yes, I agree. I'm gonna have to appeal to the jurors as usual, and see what I can persuade to them to change their minds. The defense will now embark on a on a summation examination. Oh, sweet. Uh, hey, we, we don't have to remind you guys anymore. Awesome. <laughs> Are you or your fellows ready to proceed, Mr. Foreman? We are, my lord. You're not even going, you're, you're just going to assume that that's what he wanted. This, Mr. Trevor, I've worked with this defense long enough. I know what he's about. In that case, state the grounds on why you think his whole, this whole thing is, well, idiotic. Oh, oh, we're going to, uh, uh, we're all going to, <laughs> I'm sure, I, I've known that woman for years. She'd never be an accomplice to anything. It's utter nonsense to think do those two would ever be conviving with one another. Oh dear, this is the most troubling. The truth of Wax Manistos has nothing to do with the corner, is it? 
I have made my own problems with members of the police. I do not trust uh, trust them much. I see no rigorous proof that this waxwork that waxwork wax works ever inside the birdcage. It's conjecture, it is. I can't tell without the right evidence. You're not the proper job, are you? I won't have it. Yeah. For once, they all are kind of actually in agreement with each other. Yeah. Somewhat unsurprisingly, it seems the introduction of this waxwork model to the proceedings has polarized opinion. Given that its face is obscure and its build no way resembles that of the victim, I can only applaud my learned friend temporary at suggesting Mr. Osmond's body double. Yes, the applause is deafening, and yes, I know it seems extraordinary, but that's the point! That's why I have a strong feeling it's actually a greater clue than anyone yet realizes! What are you thinking, Mr. Naruhoto? I can't explain why at the moment, but I feel as though there's a very specific reason why it was used, why it had to be this model. Really? A reason why nothing else would do, you mean? Yes, and I'm convinced it's something far more significant than whether or not the model looks like the victim. Well, if that's the case, we must prevent the trial from any prematurely at all costs. Yes, agreed. I have to find a way out of this! If you are ready, Council, you may proceed with the summation examination! Yes, my lord! I'll be watching your every move, Defense. If you mess up, I will be here to laugh. You haven't laughed yet since this whole thing came in, and I think that's a clue, motherfucker. <gasps> I haven't had a reason to laugh. You're about to give me one. <laughs> the fact you right. didn't laugh during all of this is proof enough. <laughs> Naruto, please. <laughs> sorry, sorry. I'm gonna rub it in his face in a little bit, Susano. Hold on, just give me a hot second here. <laughs> 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 one for you, that would have accomplished anything. Um, the order of things that seem to be changed around here for some reason. I'm a copper lad. Lad, it's a copper's desertion to bend the rules sometimes when need must. What's wrong with that? Where do I start? Uh, what? Uh-oh. Uh, it's this, it's uh, they're numbered. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're numbered. Okay, the, they're numbered. It's, it's a new one. Mm, fuck. <laughs> okay. Get him. Uh, Get him. I'm starting. I'm starting the blocking. Oh, thank God. Uh... Ah. <laughs> Who invited the boss into the courtroom? I oh did. God. <laughs> the truth must never get out. Go, my invention. Prevent <laughs> from progressing any further. <laughs> Mr. Trevor, please, <laughs> please stop. Doctor, Doctor Susitos just take down every single one of them. I will not boom, rest boom. until this is all behind me. All right. Okay. I think that should be all of them. Okay. I've been working Scotland Yard for forty odd years. That's even more than I thought. We've only had a metropolitan police in this town for 70 years, you know. Of course, times have changed. The public doesn't trust coppers back when I started. It was rough. We have to they still don't trust them. We have to fight crime, and then we have to fight to win the public's trust. And when we did, forensic science was in its infancy even more than it is now. And she spearheaded its revolution. Dr. Sype, you mean? That's right, about 10 years ago it was when I was a youngish Bobby at the beat. That's when she started making a name for herself as a top tier coroner. And now look at her, head of forensic investigation team, and a woman no less. Well, you wouldn't hear me complain. That's what we all dreamt of back then, I tell you. Could you tell me about holding that gun in the air? We had to hold up justice lag. Full of him we were, full of him. 
that's coming across loud and clear. Hold it! But we're not just stating this to understand the case! But what are you reading there, sir? The man behind those murders on Solo Party Street was caught in two days flat. That's real policing for you. That's really not relevant to the case, is it? You're wrong there. Because it was Dr. Sun. I've been charged of examining their bodies. It is Scythe. Is it Scythe or... Uh... Is it a yeah, yeah, I think it's Scythe. Scythe. Yeah. Yeah, oh yeah, because she's also doing insertions and stuff like that, so that would be into the pun as well, I think, at that point, yeah. Mm -hmm. And there was evidence arising from her work that led to the arrest of the scoundrel responsible. Oh. That's right! Oh! That woman is the forefront of this country's fight against crime! That's the idea that she's somehow involved in this murky business is a load of trash! I thought it was up to me to press the jurors, not the other way around! Why would you assume that? Well, quite simply because the unsightly swindler has no relation with the woman, does he? True. As it stands, we don't know any connection. Oh gosh, but it would be delightfully romantic if they somehow had mutual interest in the waxwork. Romantic? A woman of society such as myself use everything in terms of relationships, you know? Well, you learn something new every day, even if you don't want to. One might wonder about the possible relationship between the defendant and the corner woman. Or perhaps between the defendant and the handsome prosecutor just there. Uh, well... which one are you talking about? <laughs> oh, no! Oh, no! Oh, no! No! No, no, eject, eject, eject. Which one no, are you no, talking no, about like... over there? Um. No. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. oh, you're, this... you're, you're that kind of shipper, huh? <laughs> this woman seems to be more astute than I'm uh, giving her like, credit for. It's like, oh, perhaps between Dr. Hairbrain and Drepper over here. <laughs> eject, eject. I <laughs> I say that, but considering this fan, this phantom. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You're right. We're still. <laughs> if that's the woman's stance, then perhaps demonstrating some connection between the waxwork and Doctor Scythe would be enough. Yes, I agree. As soon as we have even a whiff of that connection, we'll be. She'll be the first to know. Okay, so gotta connect it onto that. Hold it. What sort of problems? Let's. Uh, wait. <coughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Let's just say we have run into each other on a numerous occasions while I've been performing on the streets. Right. I see. Obviously, artists such as myself cannot appear on stage as we work in close proximity to our audience. So we perform our great magic in parks, on street corners, and the like. But the police oh, use any time. excuse to make our lives difficult. <laughs> Whoa, look at him go! Nice. Bob Russell out of that shit. <laughs> Do you have something to say in response to that, Mr. Automail? Who are you calling a mass murderer? Uh, uh, sorry, my mistake. I, I got confused because I heard you look like him. I don't look anything like the man you want to be locked up, sonny! Thanks, Mr. Shulves. Perhaps we can move on. I was really wondering if you had something you wanted to add in response to what juror number three just said. And clearly, you do. Back in my day... Back in the good old days. It wasn't like this! What wasn't it like, sir? We it's worked true. our- Hang on, wait, 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 hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Who, all right, did, who, who, who cued up my music? <laughs> <laughs> we worked our fingers to the bone to earn the public's trust, we did. And we joe we earned it. People respected us back then. Respected you? <laughs> No one would have called the coroner in question in them days. 
A coroner's report was a hallmark of the investigation done right. Especially when Dr. Carney Stephens puts her name to it. She was the best of the best and an apple in the force of the eye. I feel like you're channeling Soldier for Team Fortress 2 a little bit. <laughs> I, I, can go, I can really lead into that one if you want. Well, hold on a minute. What are you talking about? Who's Courtney Stevens? Ah, sorry. Got a bit carried away there. Stevens is Dr. Sipes' maiden name. Her maiden name? So that was before she was married. Of course, yes, silly me. It's Sipes now, isn't it? Stevens. I'm sure I've heard that name somewhere recently. Anyway, the point is, in those great days, releasing not like now. Sorry to interrupt, sir. But do you think you could change your statement to include that name? Well, yes, I don't see why not. Uh, okay, just gotta she make sure in... Back, back when I knew her, of course. She was Courtney Stevens back then when I knew her, of course. A legendary coroner, even. Uh... Evidence. Yeah, it was... A, okay, it's evidence for... Uh... It was... This one. Yep, yeah, Stevens! Yep! Make and share! Girl, Brenda, he did what you wanted. He put the gun down. <laughs> Objection. Oh, it's back up. Yeah. So, juror number two. Oh, gosh. Me? What can I do for you? I presume that you heard what juror number six said in his statement. It's brought to light the maiden name of the coroner, Dr. Scythe. Which, which in turn turn has revealed the connection that wasn't apparent before. Well, naturally, as a woman of society, I find such connection and relationships irresistible. But oh golly, I'm afraid I failed to see what you mean. Dr. Sight's maiden name is Stevens, and though that name, the coroner, is very de de definitely linked to the waxwork of the killer. The defense has evidence to prove it. My goodness, evidence, you say? How, how utterly enthralling. Counsel, the court cannot overlook that last remark. I very much hope there is substance uh, to your claim. Of course, my lord. I would like the court to look at this. Evidence that clearly links Dr. Zeit to the mass murderer known as the Professor. By the way, I like, I like, before you present it, I'd like to point out, we had that, we had that folder right there that looks to have our paperwork, but it only has like one postcard. Yeah. <laughs> I have here a certain autopsy from ten years ago. A ten-year-old autopsy report? What front of us does, does that have? Yeah, of course, it's the autopsy of the person portrayed in the waxwork, the killer known as the Professor. The Professor's? But the man was the capital offender, so... That's right. This certification of death was drawn up after the convict's execution. The identity of the killer was never made public, so the report gives few details. But what's important is the name of the coroner who wrote it. Courtney Stevens. Oh my! Courtney Stevens? Strike a light! <clears throat> it appears that the professor's autopsy was conducted by Dr. Sight ten years ago. And a few days ago, Mr. Drepper was very, very deliberately stole the waxwork of the professor from Man to Spells. A waxwork that doesn't in fact resemble the victim, Mr. Antman, at all. And do you suppose there's some unstable relationship between those events? Absolutely, I'm sure of it. And there's no doubt in my mind that the professor case is at the heart of a link that we have yet to uncover. Between Dr. Size and Mr. Ang not Drebber! Hidden links, mysterious connections, secret relationships. This is all most extraordinary. Where shall we obligated now to explore this further? <laughs> not an idiot! 
<laughs> what? Right? We can't let this trial come to an end now. Not while well, there's a cloud of suspicion hanging over the yard's best corner. It wasn't like this in my day, but we're still here to uphold justice in the end. Not an idiot. <laughs> Have to cut a dick for that one. Hold it. Okay, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> but you claim the whole instantaneous kinesis demonstration was a trick. <laughs> that I did. But the... <laughs> God dang it, the voice. <laughs> that I did. But there's more than one way to pull a rabbit out of a hat. Is, is it there? Sorry. I, I grant you that this cage appears uh, appear for a miss of explosion. <laughs> There'd be no need for business to use a real person. <laughs> but if a waxwork had been made, the culprit could have at least had the decency to make it look like the victim. I'm not sure. Yoda, I am. I'm not sure exactly how much of a little bit. Fine, isn't it? The point is, if you're going to make a claim about that waxwork being inside the birdcage, you need to give us some evidence, you will. Without that, it's, it's science, it is not. I suppose we should not expect nothing less than the logical argument of the fellow. Fellow of the Royal Society of Yoda. Brandon. <laughs> you will. Brandon, no, no, we're not using the, the old Morgana voice. That'll be later. For some juror in the future, I'm sure of it, kind of deal. <laughs> not when we have a great voice already going. <laughs> oh, I, I know, oh, I know a character later. That oh, boy. <laughs> that perhaps means his mind could be changed if he managed to present suitable evidence evidence that the Professor Waxwork was inside the birdcage. Can I produce that or not? Uh, events of the what? Uh, I need to Are you trying to find? Oh, okay. yeah. Evidence that was inside of the birdcage. Um. Ah, okay. Do you remember what we found? Um. The... Oh, oh that yes, 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 yes. Actually, I have something I'd like you to see, sir. Oh? I must warn you that I really believe it's only wise to trust men who wear coats. So given your jet black outfit, I don't mind admitting to a sense of uh, uh, trepidation here. Uh, so you don't trust anyone in black? Looking at the mirror must be very tired. I was about to say the exact same thing on that. <laughs> I do have some evidence that proves the waxwork was inside the birdcage. Mainly. The will. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> Was that a piece of glass? <laughs> that was unusually thick for glass. Yes, it's a piece of broken glass that we found inside the jacket of the waxwork. As you say, it's no ordinary glass, though. It's very thick and ma clearly made with extra strength. Much like the special glass that was developed for the construction of the Crystal Tower. The Crystal Tower? Oh, smoke only? <laughs> <laughs> wait, 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 smoke gold? Smoke. <laughs> smoke only? <laughs> this is the path we chose. <laughs> Cosmos, smoke holy. Isn't that supposed to be? <laughs> <laughs> uh, are we just gonna let that one slide? <laughs> Exactly! The centerpiece of the great exhibition where the very incident we're talking about took place. On the day in question, the birdcage fell above and smashed through the window of that special glass. For which the small piece of... piece of... Is that it? Precisely. 
So, what do you say? Now that we have clear evidence to support the assertion that has been placed before you! Well, as I said, I only transmit a white, <laughs> white coat says, as a rule. However, when the reasoning is sound, it's fair to say color shouldn't come into it. Anyone with a drip, anyone with a good drip is good in my books. <laughs> in, in that case, draw number four. You will amend your statement now, please. The presence of that piece of glass leads, 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 leads me to little doubt that the waxwork was indeed a side map case. Yes, it was. Uh... What about the girl? Yeah, I think we gotta press the girl oh, now. I've got to ask, why have you brought that coordinate to court with you? Huh. Ah. Corner Corp, it's a big credit me farm. Pick them up your way to town, in a proper nibbling Yes, the nibbling seems to be taking quite a while. Maybe you can wait till after the trial? Oh, I don't like the sound of that. Hey, Kyle, at times like these. And then I see me be too high. The counter is always pointing me in the right direction, see? You're talking about your corn on the cob? <laughs> Perhaps it's akin to a fortune telling what flower patterns like people do back home. So Professor Hairbray's fate is decided by a cob of corn? Could you not at least wait until we've had more time to find the truth before deciding on the defendant's guilt? Oh, I don't know about that. Me tummy's awfully full already. Amazing. <laughs> I know it seems a little far-fetched to think that the waxwork model of the professor was in that birdcage, but on the other hand, it explains a lot. If there really is a reason why this particular waxwork has to be used for Mr. Asman's double, we must do everything we can to make the jurors understand it. The truth is, I'm not sure if this is the key, the key to it, but it's the most puzzling part of it, too. In that case, you should see what additional information you can glean within trying to change the jurors' minds. You can read a book which eating a rice cracker, Mr. Narhoto. I'm sure you can do this. Right. Yes! <laughs> What's the story of the rice cracker? I want to I know this story. <laughs> I don't know if you'll take two, whatever we can have in the middle that piece of glass in the world that the white screen. Uh. Uh. Is it these two? I, I, I think so. Yeah, that's that sounds about it's, right. Yeah, because the little girl is asking for evidence, and yeah. you just gave and you just gave Yoda ed evidence. Objection! <laughs> <laughs> yep. All right. <laughs> oh no! Do we have to hear him talk again? <laughs> you have to put down your corn for a minute, juror number five. You point out that it's wrong to make an accusation without evidence, but the accusation that the waxwork model was inside the second birdcage on the day in question is not without supporting evidence, as the defense demonstrated to the juror sitting beside you. Oh, is that right? Would it be fair to say you didn't follow the argument? Much for Saikon and Cobb, to be honest. <laughs> of course you didn't. <laughs> ah, fuck! <laughs> Cobb Lady, what have you done? I haven't listened to the help of more bots. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> you thought I was done. No. <laughs> Oh dear! One moment, Mr. Narhoto. I need to. Uh, I need to uh, toss some folks out. 
You fool. I have 72 alternate accounts. <laughs> You cannot possibly hope to block them all, can you? <laughs> uh, are we safe? I don't see any more coming in, so I think we're good. If I could interject here... Please do, sir. Now that this assertion of yours about the waxwork has been backed up by some solid evidence, it will be wrong of me as a man of science and of the Force not to pursue the matter further. <laughs> not an idiot, 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 <laughs> idiot not! <laughs> oh, well, it was me too then. Uh, sorry? If it's avoiding with judgment is right, then you must be. See? I, uh, 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 I wouldn't even go to get caught in cop. I would have got stuck between the ears. Cop! Not an idiot! <laughs> what is an idiot? Success! If you can call it that. <laughs> we convinced Kono Cobb. We did it. <laughs> Thank you, Council. That will do. As a result of the submission examination, the drone's overall leaning has changed. To not an idiot. Two jurors now call him an idiot against four who call him not an idiot. According to the according to the court has accordingly the court has failed to reach a consensus on this man's knowledge, and the trial must continue. We we did it. Oh, well done, Mister Naruto. Another victory. Oh, so wonderful. A waxwork of the desp of the despicable professor, used as a body double for the victim in this quite extraordinary case. I must say, it's extremely hard to believe the assertion could possibly be true. However, it would appear that it does at least warrant further investigation. It's the waxwork work of the professor that links Mr. Drever and Dr. Sight. And I'm convinced that there's a special significance to that link. I don't know what you're hoping to prove, lad. I really don't! The truth is, sir, by using the evidence and the testimony... Hmm. If the court would delve deeper into the alleged involvement of the waxwork in this case, then the prosecution calls for the owner of the model to be summoned as a witness. The owner? Madam Tisferus. Uh, I really thought that Lord Von Siegs would object to this whole line of inquiry. Very well, I concur. Make arrangements for Madam Tisferus to appear as a witness with, with immediate effect. Listen carefully, my learned friend. Oh, yes? The court shall now adjourn for 45 minutes. During that time, the prosecution will summon the new witness and prepare her for taking the stand. Madam Tispels, yes. I shall see it to her at once, my lord. I am glad also, we started an hour early. Yep! Yeah. <laughs> also, all. what are y'all's favorite core animations of this game? Uh, I still think for me the top tier one will forever be of just Naruto just like leaning like where he's thinking and then just like looking towards the fourth wall kind of deal. Uh, yeah, that's a good one. Um, Sh uh, Sh Shakespeare's dancing is also really good. But, <laughs> yep. Uh, but I, I, I also enjoy Naruto um, like 
being pushed back against the against the wall, falling on the table. That's uh, really Sherlock's fighting stance. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, follow up equally by Susanna also having that animation. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> also, we are. Also, we are. Oh, hi. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, hang on, hang on. Let me get some more water. Let me take a quick one. All right, <laughs> let's let's do a quick break because we're in because we're we're okay. Yeah, we're, we're, we're gonna go to grab uh, refills on water and such, and we'll be right back, guys. So uh, hang tight for just uh, about five minutes or so. <laughs> All right, I'm back. Oh, uh, you guys? Ah, let's do this. All righty. Uh, get everything back in. All right, Jason, whenever you're ready. Is Jason there? <gasps> knock, knock. <laughs> okay, I, I guess I'll take over the show for me there. Ah, oh, tonight's Aaron himself. Oh. You've been watching from the gallery, Mr. Sholmes? I've been on the edge of my seat this entire time. Courtroom trials are fascinating affairs, as a spectator at least. I'm glad you've been enjoying yourself. I... I have to ask. What on earth is going on? It makes no sense! What is this professor business all about? He doesn't uh, like any professor I've met before. Who even is he? Uh, of course, you were in Germany ten years ago. Yes, the professor. When I discovered he was the one who had been abducted, a sense of foreboding stood within me. But he, but who knew the monster would attack? No, knocking on your door. My heartfelt sympathies. <laughs> As it turns out. Lord Van Zeek is even more intimately tied to this case than any of us realized, isn't he? Uh, yes, how true. 
It's great friends from the university in the docks. And now a waxwork killer who his esteemed brother's light makes an appearance too. I imagine that Mr. Reaper failed to see foresee that the kick in his teeth. An extraordinary move on your part, my dear fellow. The to throw that in front of a man. And not only that. It's not only so that, but he has a very sassy apprentice. <laughs> <laughs> I can't help feeling that this professor case is really very puzzling. Oh, yes. In what particular manner? Well, there's Mr. Drever, Dr. Scythe, and Lord Van Zeeks. It seems that everybody in the trial has linked to the case somehow. Yes. In fact, I alone am not a mere member of the set! Though that leaves me as an empty set, all alone without any intersection to any other. Excuse me. Excuse me. Oh, okay. Huh? Dr. Scythe! Ha, ah, Dr. Courtney Scythe, me Stevens. Good day to you. Hello, Sholmes. What a very shrewd of you. What in particular, pray? You requested that ten-year-old autopsy report from Gregson, didn't you? Why would you assume such a thing? Because Gregson told me. To think it would have been ten years. Ten years in the laboratory wielding my scallop. I smell of nothing but corpses and disinfectants. A policeman on the jury had a lot <sighs> to say about you, <sighs> Mr. Doctor Sive, and I accused you on being complicit on what happened. I'm hoping that you'll take the stand and tell the truth on what really happened. That certainly. Okay, wait. Okay, that certainly won't be possible. Lord Van Zeeks won't be serving me as a witness. Lord Strongheart has forbidden it. Lord Strongheart? The Pandora's box you were warned about is the Professor's case. Please don't make the mistake of thinking you'll get any information about it out of me. But attempting to hide that from the truth, that's cowardice! I always fought crime in the way that I've seen fit. I have no regrets, not at all. And that all that's all I came here to say. So, good day to you. She mentioned it too, this Pandora's box. Whatever does it all mean? There's really no cause for concern, I assure you, when the trial resumes. The meeting will become will become all too apparent, whether you'd like it to or not. Huh? Now then, I believe it's almost time. I must be <coughs> oh, excuse me. I must I must make my way back to the public gallery. The answer my seat awaits! I think maybe you're enjoying yourself a little too much. To be fair, if I was in any one of these court any one of these court cases where Nara Hodo or Felix was on trial, I would also be enjoying myself. <laughs> again, I fit, fully, again, it just is for all, real people. Again, again, it just for all. They start <laughs> televising this shit for a reason, you know. <laughs> if, if in the course of the trial this afternoon you perceive even a shadow of doubt about the truth, don't let it out of your sight. Pursue it like a dog with a bone. To the bitter end, you understand. N do not falter, whatever may come to pass. All right, I understand. Thank you. Well, good. I shall make myself scarce then. I purchased a I purchased a bad camera earlier, so I shall so I shall be knowing on on that as you know way at the truth. Wait, it, did he buy his own brand? The, the, Wait, the, what does it say? Shulm's Carmel. Yeah. Carmel. Carmel. <laughs> Carmel. <laughs> Wait, hang on. So you trying to tell me there's 
there's chocolate bars with Sho's name on it. Yes. But he's not getting any other war he's not getting any other brand war. Iris, you need to get on their ass about that. <laughs> Uh, Iris, Iris, do you need a lawyer? <laughs> you got one right here. Also, Brandon, the reason why Strong Heart's forbidding her is, is as she said, she said it, um, because it's about the professor case. Yeah. Uh, the, because that, that's kind of the idea is that this professor case is just meant to not be ever talked about again, sort of deal. Mm -hmm. It's a forbidden case to talk about, pretty much. What? So any information that links to it or about the case um, cannot, uh, cannot get out. What did that warning from Mr. Sholmes really mean, I wonder? Especially that bit about whatever may come to pass. It's time for the final chapter, then. I'm determined to find the truth. No matter what. No matter what! Ba -ba 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 -ba. It's just vibing here. <laughs> Surprisingly, uh, I'm surprised it's not on fire at this point. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> In the neighborhood, Majesty the Queen, I hereby reconvene the proceedings of this court. Haha, <laughs> haha, nailed it. <laughs> Councils for the defense of prosecution, are you ready? Are you ready and able to continue? The prosecution is ready, my lord. Oh, yeah. Yes, my lord. The defense is also ready. As the court is aware, the case under our scrutiny began with the damaging incident at, at the at the Great Exhibition. Yet we now find ourselves embroiled in the details of a co in a in, in a convict felon convicted felon who was sent to the gallows a decade ago. How close are how close are we to the end of case three? Uh We started <laughs> early for a reason, we'll put it like that. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I would probably say two and a half hours? Yeah, so let's go. <laughs> this trial has certainly def defied all expectations. As seems to be the fate of all trials in which this nipple needs involved with, my lord. So then, let us begin our exploration of the defense's assertion that the waxwork was was cordially involved in this matter. Lord Von Zeeks. My lord. Are we still awaiting the arrival of a matter, of a matter to spell? Not at all. She is in the antechamber as we speak, ready to be summoned. Very well. Bring in the witness. At once, my lord. Bailiff. Show Madame to spells to the stand. Things are about to become a lot more intense. If Trevor is responsible, as I'm sure he is, it'll mean he must have had an accomplice in Dr. Scythe. And what connects the pair of them is the waxwork. Yes, the model of the professor. That's the key link between this otherwise un unrelated individuals. It's a tenacious link, admittedly. But at present, it's all I have to go on. <laughs> State your name and occupation for the court, please. My name is Madame Esmeralda Tinspell. I am the Waxwork Artitionary. A property of the Madame Tinspell's Museum of the Waxwork. We have pardoned for the work of reality as I testify. My notes of it must be open very soon. Oh, so he finally gets a statue, does he? Now there are gonna be two of them in the world? Oh my, what expression is she carving onto that face? Papers, please. A number of days ago, a particular waxwork model was stolen from your museum. Can you confirm this? Oi, that is true. At first, we believe it would have been kidnapped. A waxwork model? Kidnapped? Yes, my lord. It was the man for ransom money left behind by the culprit. However, according to what I've just been told outside of the courtroom, that is not the true reason. 
I understand it was utilized as a substitute for the body of a murder victim. At present, that is no more than conjecture proposed by the defense. This is the victim in case of question, Mr. Adi Osman. But of course I know him well. He is part of my odious personal exhibit. I detest to say of what is evident, but Mr. Osman does not resemble the professor at all. Yes, but perhaps... Perhaps their faces are very similar. Are you suggesting that we should see now the demand stitches of the professor? I have here the key that is strictly forbidden to open it to lock. This is absurd! Pardon? I don't know what face you carved into your fancy figure beneath that mask. But clearly... It won't be for the actual killer. Indeed. The man's identity was never made public, after all. The trial took place in a closed court. The proceedings were strictly confidential. The condemned man was summarily executed. His identity remains closely guarded in national secret. There is no possible way a respiratory of a tawdy exhibit could get its hands on that information. Oh, man, going a little too hard, are we? Get him, It would seem you are unaware of the Tinsmelt principles. What principles? The family Tinsmelt has always prided itself on sculpting its models à la perfection. Every detail, including the vintage it's fashioned with, is completely fit to Delby. It will die, our principles. There's a well known legend about the Tin Spell's waxwork from the time of the French Revolution. A member of the Tin Spell family is said to have made a waxwork of the Queen who has been executed. Oui, it is true. It's a century ago now. I believe the Queen's face was carved minutes following her death, actually, at the guillotine site. <laughs> you are correct. The module of display is still today at the House of Horrors. We Tinsdales will solve nothing to obtain the faithful replica of our subjects. Dear me. A somewhat disturbing tenacity of purpose. Is the only way to obtain a truly lifelike representation of the subject. It has been my family's secrets for generations. Th do you mean to say that beneath that mask? We, oui, the true vintage of the killer is there. This is ludicrous. It's out of the question! Professor spread terror throughout Great Britain. As a result, the Madame Tisbell exposition must remain extremely popular even today. A killer emerging from his own grave. It is a sight to behold. You should come. I think, madam, it would it would be beneficial to hear your formal testimony on this matter. You will explain every detail of this uh, of this macabre model and your personal involvement in its creation. Macarb. Macarb. <laughs> With pleasure. Alrighty. The special exhibit of the House of Horrors is based on the ruins of the Shock Society in London. An impression of the vintage was taken directly from the corpse in accordance with the Tinsmith family principles. I enlisted the aid of the grave digger and created a mold from the head of the cemetery just before the intermented. I hid myself until he gave me the signal. I was there for a very long time that night. I saw an approach and I was very worried I would be discovered. The grave digger? The the man sanctioned this? We oui, I will do anything necessary to treat the true resemblance my family is celebrated for. Nobody else knew only the grave digger. What harm did it do her? So you truly saw it? The face of that monster Naturally I was aware of the time that his identity was a secret. 
The tin spills would not be tin spills. We do not insist on absolute infidelity of our sculptures. I don't believe this. I myself have see the special exhibit at your museum, madame. Madame. A truly blood curdling scene in which the, the murderer is emerging from his own grave. Seeing it depicted was the subject of many rumors in London ten years ago. I have here the newsprint from the time. The special exposition was based upon the picture of this article. It was the most detailed account of what happened as reported by the eyewitness who saw it. Man rises from the grave. It's too absurd for words. The public enjoyed authority, Mordor. Uh, actually, hold on. I want to see the signature on that. Uh, Osman. Okay. Mm -hmm. Hmm. It's why I ever choose the scene carefully as possible in my museum. And that's a waxwork from the museum that was stolen some days before the incident at the Great Exhibition, wasn't it? That is correct. The professor you see before here. Hmm. Most puzzling. Counsel for the defense, proceed with the cross-examination. This waxwork links Mr. Trevor with Dr. Syke, and there has to be some reason for that in which hasn't come to light. But I'll find it. I'll get to the bottom of what really happened. And I'll prove that Dr. Syke and Trevor were in this crime together. Alrighty. Surely that's illegal, isn't it? It would seem that the proprieties of this respiratory of the this was blinded by monetary greed. He has nothing to do with money. The man is part of London's criminal history. That's why I have to sculpt him for the rec to record this history. It is the Raji Jones with Teen Spill and Rosam. But the man who was convicted in a closed court and sent for immediate execution. Then surely nobody but the members of the judiciary present would know the killer's true identity. I assure you, behind that mask is hidden the true face of the professor. You realize what you're saying? The professor's identity is a national secret! I understand. And now that the truth about the special exam has been revealed, it must perhaps close. Of course it will, as your entire museum, if you don't tread it very carefully, madame. Ah, uh, that could be another interesting chapter of the history of my family, I think, don't you? So ten years ago, on the night of the professor's execution, you took a wax impression of the face of the corpse? We oui, exactly meant it. <laughs> I'm gonna get sued. <laughs> <laughs> you were there longer than you expected to be? I had some difficulty with capturing the subject's form correctly. As I removed the mask, the mouth of the cavity had fell open, and I had some problems with the chin. Dare I ask? The man has been dead for a short while already, you see. His muscles were relaxing and consequentially. His chins would not align itself correctly. Oh dear, what a horrible Ugh. thought. Under normal circumstances, I would have had an assistant with me. However, that night I was alone. As is the consequence, I missed the preferred window of time. What do you mean? When I take the impression of the vintage of the caveat, I always wait until three hours after the death. Why three hours? Is the amount of time significant? It's because of the rigor mortis. Uh, rigor mortis? Alright, Google. Alright, so what, what does Google say, Sam? It's the name given to the phenomenon that occurs in recently deceased bodies. 
As a rule, three hours post-staff and muscle in the bodies begin to stiffen. By approximately ten hours post-staff, the entire body is completely rigid and flexible. And then from that point on, the muscles slowly start to revert to their relaxed state. The effects are often used to estimate the time of death when the body is discovered. Well, that was an education, if slightly scary one. Also, oh, Susano, why do you know that? Google! <laughs> uh, I don't know, maybe it's perhaps because my dad is a doctor! <laughs> that too! <laughs> As the men was able to say, Regan Wolfsis commenced three hours after death, and he starts in the jaw. I see. So that's why you wait. Before the time the mouth was open, and it is very difficult to do me work. Uh, it's getting hard for me to do my work with all this talk of corpses. Hmm. I wonder about that information that the corpse just heard about now the spell. Um, the information about the rig and mortis that you just shared with us. Would you mind including it in your formal testimony? I believe it to be significant, you see. Of course, I do not mind, Joe. I can't help feeling that after this latest topic. The atmosphere in this courtroom has become extremely... grave? <laughs> this is no time for jokes, Susato. You. Alright. Took me a very long time because before I went... I am trying to remember the... Uh... Ten-year-old article. That uh, might be it. I don't. Uh, but I don't know, like, what part of it would be it if they need me to, like. To see if there's like another part of the thing, like the balloon one from before. Yeah, I think it would have to be that paper of like saying that, hey, the guy went in and. <laughs> Tried to bury up for the grave at that point, so maybe that's it. Objection! Now, nah. mm -hmm. uh, okay. Oh, that. Tell us which is the right one. Well, just make sure that is the statement. <laughs> Good idea. Okay, it is that yeah. one. Uh, that is not a professor. Yeah. Oh wait, I checked the autopsy report. Oh yeah, yeah, of the uh... <gasps> ah. Objection. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Okay. It was just her name. You just said her name. <laughs> oh, you're going back to get the uh, the the. the... <laughs> My lives. Objection. There we go. <laughs> Mount to spells. I have here an autopsy report that was filed ten years ago now, and it confirms the death of the professor following his execution at the gallows. And is it a problem? I believe it is, because your testimony and that particular detail of the report COMPLETELY CONTRADICT ONE ANOTHER! Kia? Are you going to explain yourself, my Nipponese friend? According Maybe to your testimony- I'm going to! <laughs> Turns around. 
<laughs> it just like slowly like itches his head. Kind of deal. <laughs> According to her testimony, Madame de Spells was cr creating a wax impression before dawn. And at that time, rigor mortis had not yet set in. Am I correct so far, Madame? You are, yes. Easy said the stiffening of the jaw is the first sign of rigor morphosis, two or three hours after death. The man she was lived, so he cannot have been dead for a long time. But on the other hand, if you took Dr. Sykes' report, it quite clearly states the following. Death by hanging confirmed at midnight, June 17th. No! If the professor indeed died at midnight that day, then the time... explain himself. Th Shut up. <laughs> then by the time you were sculpting his face, rigor mortis would have already set in. Oh yes, you're right. The chin would have been completely stiff. In other words, this report is wrong! Objection! No corner makes a mistake when recording the time of death. The very idea is absurd! In that case, there's only one possible conclusion. The execution didn't actually take place at the stated time! I'm IMPOSSIBLE! Apparently it is. Order! Order! Counsel, this is beyond folly! Not only do you indict the author of the report, Dr. Scythe, but you also implicate members of the staff at Barclay Prison where the execution took place! By heck! Extraordinary! Not as my day! My learned friend appears to have overlooked one very critical fact. Oh, what fact? The professor died that night, without question! He did, of course he did. I moved the man's lift jaw with my own hands. There's no- OBJECTION! Yes, the professor died that night. But what if he didn't die at the gallows? He didn't die at- ARE YOU INSANE?! What- What exactly are you suggesting did happen in that case? That he didn't die at the gallows. Weren't you listening? I swear to Christ. Susana, do you think he's done with that man shit at this point? <laughs> I think I think you know why he doesn't bring him to trials yeah, as often. Yeah, I, I think so. I think that might be why. It's almost impossible to believe, but it would explain the link. No, Brandon, no. no it's nothing against Jason or anything like that. I'm just playing up the joke kind of deal. <laughs> <laughs> it's called yeah. comedy and playing off your friend, all right? <laughs> Between Dr. Sykes and the professor and that one other person of interest, I have evidence that will explain exactly why I'm suggesting happened that night. Castle, present the evidence at once. The evidence that allegedly explains what really happened on the night of the professor's execution. What happened that night is written very plainly on this newspaper article. Executed criminal returns in the dead of night at local cemetery. You're suggesting it was the corpse coming back from the dead now? Well, if this article is to believe, yes. The professor, assumed to be dead following his execution, emerged from his grave and was killed again. Objection. Da -da -da. Don't be a fool. That's simply a rumor. Published by the Gutter Press! Can you be certain of that? Are you serious? The point is, as the article states, there was a witness to what happened. My word! Yes, yes, indeed! 
Yeah, Ma, the young man stole in the cemetery by the chance of night. Objection! Of course there was a witness. The story didn't write itself, but obviously that man made it up! And in any case, this was ten years ago now. There would surely be no hope of finding him. On the contrary, my lord, we know this witness too well. What? Are you suggesting, Castle, that you've identified the person in question? That you know who claims to have seen these utterly incredible events take place? Yes, my lord. In fact, you could say he's right here before my very eyes. You will sub substantiate your latest claim now, then, Council. Who is the alleged witness of this staggering scene for the cemetery ten years ago? The man in question is Mr. Eggnock Drebber. Drebber? The, the previous witness? The special exhibit in the House of Horrors at Madame de Spell's Museum of Waxwork recreates a decade-old scene in great detail. The condemned criminal emerging from the grave, and beside the tomb, a young man with his lantern stumbling through the terrifying sight. And that young man... is a ten year younger Mr. Eknock Drebber! Order! 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 Surely not, Council! Rebber was there in Lowgate Cemetery. Uh what did Zelda talk about Mr. Drabba? Is the name significant? Of course, man, this felt doesn't know, does she? Yes, it's extremely significant, madame, to your situation as well, in fact. What situation? The theft of the professor's waxwork at your museum some days ago was perpetrated by the very same man. No. Oh. What that would mean? Madame Tuspels It would appear you know the name Edmund Drebber We? Oui, yes, I know it But from a long ago in the past What? Oh my! Good gracious! Explain yourself! Tell us everything you know! Yes, yes, of course. The story of a young man and the terrible sight he witnessed in the cemetery ten years ago was published in every single newspaper in London and throughout Great Britain. However, in all of the articles of the witness was simply described as a certain young man. No details were published about his identity. His name was never revealed. That is, apart from one newspaper. Oh dear. What? I... Compute. Sh it's frozen. Splitting, yeah. Oh, uh... Is it better now? Uh, oh, no, uh, share screen for us is, 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 is frozen. Yeah. Okay, uh, let me just refresh it real fast. I was in the middle of a story. There now? Yeah, so I'll, I'll back up the history. <laughs> the Daily Circus is from the paper in which the article is already shown the court. You're saying his, that his full name was only publicized in that article? Goodness me, yes, here it is. The university student who experienced this shocking event is Mr. Enoch Drebber, a dis disciple of science at the University of London and a resident of his student dorms. You know, very convenient that he had Mr. as part of his name as well. <gasps> Unbelievable! When I read the article, I went to be with the man. The discovery of a condemned criminal coming back to life in the cemetery of the dead of night. 
would make for a perfect expedition for my house of horrors, whether it's the truth or not. I see. So you went to meet Mr. Drabber in order to sculpt a waxwork of the man, did you? Exactamente. He was studying the science at the University of London in those days. He was just a poor student. I paid him five pound a month for the work. And since that time, it has been in my museum to recreate the... <sighs> ...scene of terror from the cemetery. So, ten years ago, a young man appealed to the public about an extraordinary event he witnessed. A criminal who had been put to death, re-emerging from his grave in the middle of the night. But the public treated his claim as nothing more than an amusing antidote that was soon forgotten. Ten years later, the same man steals the waxwork model of the executed criminal obsidently to use as a body double for the victim in a case we're discussing here today. Even though the waxwork build is a poor match for the victim, and its face obscured by a mask. So the question is, why would the man do such a thing? Which brings us to three days ago, when the birdcage crashed into the crystal tower. The birdcage had in fact contained not the body of Mr. Osmond, but the same waxwork. The coroner of Scotland Yard who investigated Dr. Sype would have noticed immediately. And yet, she submitted this autopsy report for the victim, which the court has seen earlier. Why? Because the waxwork was of the professor. Is that what you're saying? Dr. Sight put her name on the document confirming the death and condemning the criminal who was still alive. The criminal whose apparent resurrection was witnessed by Mr. Drebber. But that misconduct was a deadly secret for the coroner would do anything to protect. Which is precisely why Mr. Drebber used that particular waxwork as a body double. Ugh! Got you there, didn't he? My lord! This court must summon Dr. Sight to the stand. The defense is determined to find out exactly what happened to the coroner and Mr. Drebber are connected. But according to the, uh, according to, to the, to the missive I've received this morning through the prosecution, prosecution's office, Dr. Sight is unable to participate in these proceedings. Is that not the case? She tells herself, didn't she? I am legit not allowed. Get out <laughs> of my face. Bye. Mm. Something happened on the night of that killer's execution ten years ago, and I'm surely nobody would want to get to the bottom of that more than Lord Von Zeeks. The prosecution called instructions in that missive to be scrapped. But, but Lord Vazix, the missive was this issue for, for the Lord Chief Justice Office. Objection. The assigned prosecutor has the final say on policy in any particular trial. In other words, me. <laughs> yeah, Prankster, this is a case three. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and, and, uh, yeah, this is not third case syndrome in any, <laughs> the slightest, at all. Yes! Let Ignok Drebber and Dr. Scythe both take the stand together! Order! 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 Very well, I will uphold your request. Bailiff! Send, send on some pony of with immediate effect addressed to Dr. Scythe and the forensic investigation team. The woman is compelled to attend on Her Majesty's orders. Alright then, Eknock Drebber and Dr. Scythe, if 
they weren't colluding with one another, this crime could never have been committed. And I'm just a stone throw away. I can feel it. The truth behind all of this is about to come out. I think the only game in the Ace Attorney franchise I think the cat does suffer from third case syndrome is actually in. I think honestly, I I think it's only Justice for All and Apollo Justice. Honestly, I think are the only two games I can really think of. <laughs> Thank you for your attendance on such short notice, Doctor Scythe. I'm disappointed in you, Lord Van Seeks. You completely betrayed the agreed policy of both Scotland Yard and the Prosecution Office. Betrayal is not my nature, as long as the truth is compromised. If it is, if there's even a hint of wrongdoing, then no matter who it concerns or disrupts us. Third case syndrome is, um, is essentially saying that the third case of 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 the game is usually the worst is usually the worst of the bunch. Yeah. I would say it's definitely more of a thing in Danganronpa than Nate's attorney uh kind of deal. Um I think it's mostly people see case three as usually the filler case uh kind of deal, which a lot of the time it technically is, but sometimes there are just cases I think that are worse than that kind of deal. <laughs> yeah, I only think two and four are the only games in the series where I think they fall victim to that. I will pursue the matter to a bitter end. As would any prosecutor worth his salt. Mr. Drebber, you took the victim's life by means of that machine you constructed in your workshop. And Dr. Scythe, as the investigation coroner, you were the first on scene to examine the victim's body. It is the belief of the defense that you collaborated with each other and were both complicit in this crime. And where's your evidence? At the present, we do have not we have no definitive evidence, but we have a very significant clue. What are you talking about? I'm talking, of course, about the waxwork! This model of the killer known as the Professor who was sentenced to death 10 years ago. You don't need to tell me. I witnessed the man's execution with my own eyes and officially pronounced him dead. That remains to be seen. Is that so? According to this newspaper reports of the time, on the night of the following, ex following his execution, the killer came back to life. Just don't waste my time. And the sole witness of that mysterious event was you, Mr. Drebber, wasn't it? If you, if what you saw in the graveyard that night 10 years ago wasn't some chilling fiction, but reality, it would mean you hurt Rivi to be a very great secret of Dr. Sykes. A secret so profound it would compel the coroner to agree to collaborate with your evil scheme, in fact. God, when was the last time Trevor actually said something? He's been dots for the entire time. <coughs> I've been making bots to go after you. <laughs> oh, okay, that's okay. That's what he's been doing. Oh, yeah. Mr. Trevor, tell the court, tell and everyone the truth they, they, of what you saw that night in Lowgate Cemetery. So he was the student that saw it. You can't see the resemblance, actually, can't you? With the man of man spell, I mean. Surely he's not going to claim that it would be what he really saw, especially not after all these years. He was a research student at the University of London, was he? And a bit too clever for his own good, if you ask me. <laughs> what an interesting twist. When at the time, not one person would take me seriously. Yet now, here we are, ten years later, as suddenly my story matters, and in a court of law, too. <clears throat> Very well, then. If everyone so wishes, let's be frank. I'll tell you the truth of what happened that night. 
for what it's worth. So, Mr. Drebber, your testimony, please, about the events of that night ten years ago. You will tell the court exactly what you stumbled across in Low Gate Cemetery. Yes, of course, as you wish. Alrighty. What did he see? The reason I was in Low Gate Cemetery at, at all ten years ago was for a spot of moon lighting, shall we say. <laughs> Bullshit! <laughs> P.S. The illustration in that newspaper article was based on what I witnessed that night. But thinking back now, I have realized that I never actually saw the professor. Soon afterwards, I was visited by a young woman who sculpted a model of me for wax. Then I gave up on my dreams of becoming a scientist. And it was all, all because of that newspaper article. Wait a minute! You're... You're claiming you didn't actually see the professor now? Of course. You would have to have a screw loose if you believe a corpse could come back from the dead. But... But... So you're saying that this article is... Twitter nonsense, and nothing more. I think that would describe it perfectly, yes. Ugh. If the details in the article aren't true, it nullifies your argument as to why Mr. Trevor and Dr. Sice would be working together. So he's discrediting it himself to cripple my argument? Tell me, witness! You claim to have been in the cemetery on uh, some auxiliary business. Can you elaborate? That is one of my favorite animations of just like his little wavy hand thing that he's got going on there. <laughs> just, just say hi. <laughs> hi. That's right. Grave, grave robbing to be precise. As you know, Low Gate Cemetery is at the rear of Barclay Prison. So among students at the university, it had a reputation for being haunted by the ghosts of condemned convicts. Grave robbing, you say? Yes. Exhuming fresh corpses to sell is reasonably lucrative. Of course, I never laid finger, I laid a finger on any valuables buried with the dead. So you were one of those so-called resurrections, a particularly unpleasant scourge of society. Actually, my fellows and I went by another name, the Repurposers. That, that is quite beyond the pale. You, you would have fight to find retribution, sir! Yes, well, I think I suffered retribution enough. The Daily Circus eventually unearthed my name and put it in print. It caused me a great many headaches. In the end, I had to leave the university. That was the only paper with the bad grace to identify me unambiguous, I might add. I see. Out of interest, who drew the illustration for the article? Ah, yes. That was the reporter who exposed me. He sketched that, he sketched that right in front of me as I described the scene. Obviously, as, as time ticked on, I bitterly regretted what I'd done. Claim, claim me to have seen something I never truly saw. Foolish. Very foolish. Hmm. Well, 
Counsel for the defense. Uh, have at it. At uh, once, my lord. <laughs> oh, boy. Mm -hmm. I, I, I had my suspicion on this from, like, the beginning kind of deal. Uh, but... I think our motive is uh, right there, kind of deal, for the one that actually got his name into there. <laughs> Ooh la la. Okay, this one I called bullshit on immediately, so I want to ask on this one. By moonlighting, you mean grave robbing, do you? Surely you only need to look at the graveyard scene in my appearance to gauge the answer to that. The Lantern Spade. By who on earth did you would want to buy a dead body? Any major hospitals. A hospital? In other words, to better understand the human body and the study of anatomy is crucial for the medical science. But there isn't a hospital in the world with enough specimens to walk at. Though obviously they can't openly express an issue that they mean more by dubious means. As, a, as aspiring scientists, we young research students had no money to work with, as I'm sure you can imagine. <laughs> also, uh, Susado, Susado, did you, did you, did you hear what he called it? Did, did, did you hear what he fucking called it? Look, 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 Keep misusing their tea. <laughs> and the war rages on another day. <laughs> it appears that there seems to be a. How do I say? Sir, a misunderstanding on the, <laughs> the differences of opinions on the defensive side. <laughs> Most amusing. Anyway, we would never take anything of value for the graves. This was all for the further, for, for the furtherance of science, you see. That's what we all told ourselves every time we stole it, stole it into the graveyard at night, spade in half. Because of what to? Hmm. Realize body snatching is a serious crime. If you were caught, you could expect the gravest of consequences. You see what I did there, Apprentice? Gravest. Get it? How'd I say the joke? <sighs> Why do I even bother? <laughs> we students were caught between the hammer and the anvil. We need a box for research. Professor Hairbrace said exactly the same. I'm quite speechless at the apparent levity with which you've revealed this abhorrent behavior. Well, if you wanted to know why I was there at Low Gay Cemetery, that's the reason. But I never expected it to end the way it did. That, I regret to this day. Uh, actually, I think I'm more curious on. Okay, the two state. There's kind of three more statements on that. Uh, uh... Yeah, I think I think I want to get the illustrator. The strange happening at Logate Cemetery, which you now deny. Not entirely. I went to fetch the police at the time. You know, I was shaking like a leaf. But they, but they didn't believe a word of it. In fact, I was very nearly arrested myself. So you went to the papers instead? I started big with the London News, but unsurprisingly, they didn't want to know either. In the end, though, it was reporters for the gossip rags, the gutter press, that came to get my story. You know, the TMZs of the world. <laughs> it is spread like the plague through the capital as gossip-hungry Londoners lapped up the tale. 
like that lady at the juror seat. The story was in every single paper at the time, with the exception of some broad sheets. Yeah, you read TMZ? <laughs> <laughs> and yet, only two or three of them actually interview me personally. I bet one of them was BuzzFeed. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Most of the accounts turned out to be very interpretive ghost stories. What about the article in the Daily Circus? That particular journalist found me at my dormitory. I don't know how, but he discovered my name. So I recounted to him exactly what had happened that night. And from your description, he drew this illustration? Precisely. That's how I learned that the condemned man was the infamous professor. Because the reporter told me so, I had no idea myself, you see. Newspaper reporters aren't worth to snoop around in matters that don't concern them. So the scene portrayed in the illustration is accurate, then. Well... WHAT ARE YOU TALKING ABOUT?! I think I explained it already, didn't I? Logan Cemetery is at the rear of Barkley Prison. So it was renowned among the students at the university for being haunted by the ghosts of condemned convicts. For some absurd reason, I was scared of the graveyard at night. And as a result, only two willing to only two willing to believe that nonsense about the dead coming back to life. But you said you actually saw it! Then you say that you're a lawyer. We tend to lie on us in a thing, don't we? It's literally my profession. For the love of God. <gasps> <laughs> Answer the damn question. <laughs> I said what I I said what I seen in my mind's eye. After all, resurrection is impossible, isn't it? You'd have to be unhinged to think otherwise. Unless, of course, you have some evidence that proves I encountered the professor that night. I don't know. Is there any material evidence to show that you really did see the professor? If we have anything at all, Mr. Narahoto. I know. I need to present it against irritating backtracking statements of his. The point is, that night was a pivotal moment in my life. Okay. God, this one's been going on for a long time. That young woman being mad to spells, of course. Precisely. I must say, I didn't expect to run into her again like this ten years later. Speaking of which, hello. As I have explained, I went by the name published in the article, and Coutoufois found the man. Yes, the article in the Daily Circus, I think you said. I was a poor student with barely a penny to my name at the time. And the young lady put five pounds in front of me. So you readily consent to have the waxwork of yourself made and a grave impression for it to put on this leg. I did. I should sell what little I had to sell. Ah, uh, we. Oui, I remember now. I purchased something else for you that day, BC Peace. Did you? I can't say I remember. What was it, madam? His camera. Ah. Oh, yes. I made a point of taking it with me where whenever I whenever I made an excursion into any cemetery. You took a camera with you, sir? 
To what end? To record the details of the bodies I disinteared. But I had no intention of ever visiting a graveyard ever again after that night, so I sold it. Hmm. I see. I still have it, Mosho, as part of the special exhibit at my house of horrors. It is very meticulous about such details. It is the suspense way. It would seem, then, that this is the very camera Mr. Driver took to him at Loki Cemetery on the night in question. Yes, interesting. Hmm, okay. Then I want to check that camera again now at this point. Is there anything in there that can show the identity at that point? Because we know there wasn't anything in the back there, but... Oh! Oh my. Uh, I don't remember seeing that before. <laughs> was that there before? I don't remember. Yes. It was? Wow. <gasps> Look, Mr. Naruhoto. What is it? On the bellows just here, there seems to be some very dark red stains. Yeah, you're right. Looks like blood, actually. Oh. Oh my. I'm I'm sure it's not what you're thinking. <laughs> so. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> well, you have what you need. Now now you got to pick the right statement. Yeah. So that's that's a big part. Okay, let me read through these again. Beth. Based on what I witnessed it, thinking back, I never actually saw the professor at all. Soon after, I was by you. Yeah, I think it's gotta be this one. It's gotta be that one. It was the one where he mentioned, well, do you have evidence? Yeah. Objection. Wait, what the fuck? Oh, wait, I I think this this one I got stumbled on first. Actually, let me ch check something. Oh, hey. So, I mean, go to that statement. I mean, Patrick does have story modes. Yeah. No, I'm trying to remember if this is the thing that, that got me stumped. Uh, try presenting the newspaper on this one. Objection! What? What? Wait, I know. What? Wait, hang on. Wait, 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 wait before, like... What? What? <laughs> what logic is what logic is this game working off of with that one? What? Uh, 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 huh? Okay. okay where does let, let's see where this one go? Sorry, Mr. Trevor, I don't believe that. Don't believe what? Your latest claim. You did see the professor that night ten years ago. Hmm. Oh dear. We seem to be at odds, but I was there, and you were not. I know what I didn't see. The illustration with this article was drawn based on what you told the journalist what you witnessed. A figure re-emerging from the tomb, wearing an iron mask. Uh, uh, oh. Uh, oh, the mask! Okay, I can... oh. Okay, oh. okay, I, I see it now. Alright, alright. So at the same yeah, okay, yeah. I feel like they didn't I feel like could have been more specified. I like... think that mm. because they put emphasis on the camera in the presses, I think they should have put a little bit on the mask to lead yeah. you into that line of thinking. Yeah. Because, you, 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 because like the only time that they point out the mask is when matter is like when they suggested to unlock it, Matt was like, I have the key right here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, when the killer was tried ten years ago, it was decided in the close court's rules that the man would wear a mask to hide his identity. It was never to be removed even during his execution and subsequent burial. Not even the prison wars were to see the man's face. But obviously, the, the provision of this mask was not public knowledge. So, Mr. Drebber, as you just heard... Eh. 
Hang on. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it's, it's just an act. <gasps> A lowly student of the University of London certainly wouldn't have the known the condemned man's mask. So unless you actually seen the professor that night, it's inconceivable that the artist would have included the mask in that illustration. Ah. <laughs> Order! Order! Well, Mr. Drebber? Bueno. It's a vile scene, isn't it? If you look closely. And as I've already been at pains to point out, I was utterly petrified. Which is why I had it in my head that I seen such a blood-curdling sight. But afterwards, I came to my senses and realized that I'd been mistaken. You... You're still saying you didn't see it? If you're stubbornly sticking to this story, witness, then amend your testimony to explain exactly how you, your eyes deceived you. Of course, of course. Only too happy to oblige. I can't believe he's still not gonna concede to the point. That, that smile. <laughs> All right. Why, what I in fact witnessed was a fellow grave robber at work. What? <laughs> okay, I'm pressing him on that one. Hold it! <sighs> a fellow grave robber? What are you talking about? Well. I wasn't the only one busy in that cemetery that night, you know. Other body satyrs were at work. Of course, when I saw what emerging from the hole he dug, my heart very nearly stopped. So that's the terrifying sight I actually saw you see. You're claiming it was just another student's equally instabilious business of your. Many of the medical students would wear metal masks to protect them from bacteria during dissection. Clearly, the fellow was using such a mask to protect his un. un. Objection. What did you say? But there's no more to the story, isn't there? The article goes on to say, The next second, a gu gunshot rings out suddenly from behind. The bullet pierced the resurrected man's chest, whose breath is then stilled once more. Well, there goes your blood. Yeah. We might assume that the... Sextant, the sextant discovered the, the miscreants at work, perhaps. And fired upon, and fired upon one of them. If the grave digger had shot someone in the cemetery, I think that would have rather been big news, my lord. Ah, yes. Well, I can only assume it was an establishment bolted on on later by the report. Excuse me. <laughs> Mount the spells. Don't take it out on Mr. Sholmes. <laughs> Oh, la pardon. I was lost in my thoughts. All alone, you may say? <laughs> Would it be fair to say that Mr. Drebber's last remark was significant to you in some way? I thought it was a little strange, that is all. How must your Drebber? I could claim this now. You don't mind me saying, madame. What are you talking about? Well, when I met you ten years ago at University Dormitory, you recounted me about your adventures in the... Oh, cemetery, it? no? Okay. Yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna refresh it again uh, for you guys. I don't know why it's, like, being so picky right now. Okay. When you recount me your adventures in the cemetery, no? Including the gunshots. Stop! 
you might want to watch your tongue, you know. Have your care, Trevor. That's no way to talk to a lady. That's that. Please, man, the spells. Carry on. Of course. According to what Monsieur Trevor told me at the time, he did hear a gunshot from behind him. The bullet hit the condemned man. I said nothing of the sort. No, you are very explicit about the details. About the mask that the figure was wearing. And the blood that spattered over you when it was shot. Enough! Shut up, woman! You're making all of this up! <laughs> no, she's not! <laughs> <laughs> that, that will do! Mr. Drebber. Yes. You refute the account just given by Madame to spell. I have no recollection of ever saying those things. Come on! Do you really expect us to believe you? Control yourself, Count. So I will not permit baseless accusations in my courtroom. But it's not baseless. I got the proof right here. <gasps> right. Under the circumstances, I think it, it best that you supplement your testimony with a statement to clarify your position on this witness. Very well. Get his ass, get his ass, get his ass, get his ass! <laughs> I love that Mad no Spell just doesn't care. Like... You can stop right there! Mr. Drever, do you remember this camera? Oi! That's the camera from the Fateful Nights! Yes! You have it? We borrowed it from the House of Horrors. It's the camera that you took stuff. to the cemetery that night, Mr. Drever. And is that supposed to be significant? This kind of camera is rarely seen in our homeland, so my colleague and I were keen to examine it closely. We noticed that the lens extends forward and at the end of some kind of bellows. Like this. Hold it! Oh! <laughs> uh, <laughs> New one. <gasps> What's that there? It's just on the bellows. It looks like a dark red stain. It's blood, man. <laughs> ah. That's right. It's rather conspicuous mark here on the bellows, in fact. Good lord! Are you suggesting? Yes, my lord. It would appear to be a spatter of blood. Something that could be confirmed with a simple chemical test. Isn't that right, Dr. Scythe? It would be difficult to determine if it was a human blood or not the blood of some animal. But yes, to test whether or not it's blood at all is simple enough. I propose that Madame Tispel's testimony was correct, and on the night in question ten years ago, you were splattered with blood from a gunshot wound. Well, I... And that furthermore... You really witnessed the testimony Witnessed the condemned professor emerging from his tomb! Please <laughs> I like that animation a lot. <laughs> There's simply no way you could have forgotten a traumatic experience like that. In other words, the only explanation is that you're trying to hide the fact you saw the professor that night! Objection! But why? Why would he want to do that? Well, not for his gain, it would seem. But who's then? Who could benefit? Dr. Trevor is obviously lighting in order to protect someone. My goodness! He's shooting someone? Yes, my lord. And clearly, it's someone who he doesn't want the truth about the professor's coming back to life to be exposed. 
Well, Council, who is it then? Who is this witness trying to protect my life about what he saw that night? Uh, okay. I... Yeah, I think it would be Osman at that point. Take that! Yeah, okay. Hmm. Good gracious! That's certainly, that's certainly not the answer I was expecting. Uh-oh, that's not the reaction I was expecting either. I suggest you go ahead and crawl into a tomb. Maybe then you'll emerge on a better grasp of the case. <laughs> Damn, son. Uh, fear not, Mr. Naruhoto. Uh, oh, oh, oh. I was actually a sick bird. Oh, fuck. Oh, oh, man, you got him good with that one. Hell yeah. <laughs> uh, up top. High five. <laughs> up top. Yeah. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay, there we go. That's the right one. <laughs> I mean, why why would he be protecting a dead man? Well, I I don't, I just uh, yeah. <laughs> it was gonna be one of the two. I was thinking it was that was where he was gonna get brought up. Take that. The obvious answer. Uh, Take that. Take that. Take that. The obvious answer is Doctor Scythe. Scythe. What? Whatever do you mean? Imagine if you're the convict that's been sentenced to death was not in fact killed. Imagine if it was to come to light. What are you insinuating? And imagine if the convict in question was the country's most hated mass murderer. If it was the professor. That, that would be an unprecedented scandal! This is beyond a joke! I need, need I point out the dead cannot come back to life? Are you suggesting that for me? The execution never actually happened? Yes, that's exactly what it would mean. Objection. Once a man is sent to the gallows, he hangs. No one could escape, not in Great Britain. Objection. But the fact is, there is a witness to the fact that the man did escape his hanging. If that were really true, Council, the implications of this conduct would not stop at the supervisor corner. It would take the honor of the entire judiciary from the ground up. And it's exactly because of that monumental repercussions that Dr. Scythe would consent to a demand made by, of her made by someone who threatened to expose the secret. Even if that meant becoming a complicit in the crime. You... you mean... I mean that Dr. Scythe wasn't collaborating in Mr. Drever's wicked scheme. She was concerned in collaborating in order to protect her decade-old secret. She switched the dead body of Mr. Osmond with the waxwork model and fabricated the autopsy report. <laughs> well, putting your foot down, finally, huh? Lord Fetzeeks? <laughs> Pray forgive my freshly fallen hallowed chalice and the whole wrath of utter discourses now. Man, don't we want to smell your stinky feet? <laughs> <laughs> Leave this courtroom now. <laughs> I will talk with you later. <laughs> I'll leave him. I'll, I'll leave him. That was an order! <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, man. Whatever. Chill. <laughs> oh, you need to chill, man. <laughs> it's, I feel like it's becoming cord from Thor Ragnarok. <laughs> yeah, man. We're gonna miss it. I'm not gonna chill. Yeah. Cosma <laughs> truly does have amnesia. <laughs> <laughs> Goodness me! It's just sort of a tall tale of the desperate uh, joy I grant you. An executed killer rising from the grave. A Scotland Yard cover-up. A conspiracy of the highest levels. So let me ask you one thing. What's that? If the 
condemned man really emerged from his tomb that night only to be shot in the chest. Who pulled the trigger and disposed of him forever? Uh, well, I have no idea at the moment. We have too little information to work with that at present, I think. I... I couldn't agree more. The old Bailey is no place for wild fantasies. Ugh. And you have considered this, my Yonis friend. Considered what? Do you realize what dangerous endeavor it would be to consign this woman into such criminal activity? It's to its paramount to declaring war on the entire British police force and judiciary. Why of he of all people? Okay, okay. Quite. Aren't you imagine any sum of money being offered for research co 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 warranted? To rely on some stage deception when so much is at stake would be madness. Well, I suppose. And this was no petty crime either. The victim was murdered. A man who already invested money into the venture and would be instrumental in future profits, too. Unfortunately, he's a smart juror. Yeah. <laughs> he, 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 listen, he has a PhD for a reason. It's just <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's denying his intelligence. It's just the fact that, oh, God, he's speaking. <laughs> 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 Why did he have to get the other voice kind of deal? <laughs> it just happened that way. Yes, I had no reason to kill Mr. Asmund at all. But you do. <laughs> or are you forgetting that his death results in me receiving not a single penny? You did that for insurance, motherfucker! <laughs> the court is already aware of the contract between myself and the victim. Ooh. Hmm. There is the contract. That's very true. Motive for this case runs deep, though. I can feel it. Using threats to force the head of forensic investigation team to corroborate is extreme. It's nothing for the government grant that has no guarantee of routine in the first place. If the research grant was his aim, taking to Osman's life would make no sense anyway. Which means, Mr. Drebber's motive wasn't money at all. He was just trying to kill Osman! But why? What was his motive then? Time is up, my learned friend. I'd say you have one more chance before the jury loses their patience with this charade. The jury or you? Let's see if you can come back from your heavy proposal, shall we? Hmm. <laughs> 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 I didn't think he would actually. Right <laughs> <laughs> that best clip, clip, please. Oh my god! Somebody clip it! Oh, Somebody clip it! Oh my god! <laughs> How do you explain why this engineer would throw all caution to the wind and threaten his own country, like I threaten my own assistant right here with the hallowed chalice of this hall? <gasps> Yo, he could Korean back ass! Korean back ass! <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Nice! He could Korean back ass! Oh At god. this point, I'm not prepared to listen to more of this outlet is congestion without proof. So, counsel, present your evidence. Alright, who exactly was Mr. Osmond to Trevor? 
there's a connection there that no one's seen yet. Despite the fact we looked at this article so many times, I don't know how anybody has seen it yet. And I'm going to have to present two pieces of evidence to show what it is. Okay, well I know one of them, <laughs> for sure. Yes, my lord. The evidence that establishes a motive and why do you fit the one of them dead is right here. Take that! It's the newspaper article, my lord. That was written ten years ago and every detail has been examined already. What can it possibly tell us? That drivel should never have been written. It's typical gutter press nonsense that means nothing. Yes, on its own, it's not particularly significant. However, when considered alongside another piece of evidence, it will completely explain your motive for wanting Mr. Osmond dead. What other evidence? Counsel, you will present your supplementary evidence without delay. The evidence, which we cross-reference with the newspaper article, establishes a motive for, for the deed. Uh, okay. The second one I'm not so sure on, so let me save for that one. Cross-examine with the original. This other piece of evidence gave me a big brain moment. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. Uh, hold on. So, I, 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 what I, do we. I'm just thinking through real fast. The autopsy is wrong. Um. It says something went wrong with that clip, but, 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 but the link still works, so. Okay. Uh, hmm. This evidence was cross-examined with another newspaper. With the newspaper article establishes a motive. Uh, that, that's a problem, like, I feel like the newspaper would be enough kind of deal, because, like, it shows that they, they, uh, like. Uh, okay, what, what, what proves that, what proves in the newspaper that, what's the proof in the newspaper? of his name right there that he did the story at that point and how can we prove that it's the same one sir uh um sir osman uh oh yeah. uh the inventor of the osman okay okay so that's what it is like the, uh the contract then mm -hmm. yeah Take that! Okay, yeah, okay. <laughs> I was a little overthinking that one. It's in the contract, my lord. Mr. Drebber, this is the contract you signed with Mr. Osman. Oh, same signature, yeah. Okay, that makes sense, yeah. Yes, that's right. The very document, in fact. That, that proves I had no reason to kill the man. No, I'm afraid not. What? There's something very significant that this newspaper article and the contract have in common. Really? And it's the common link. That shows very clearly why you were determined to kill Mr. Adi Osman. It seems the defense has uncovered something the rest of us have missed. So, my learned friend, point out to you these people. Two pieces of evidence have in common. You won't like it. <laughs> it's right here. What these two pieces of evidence have in common is a signature. Uh, a signature? There's a signature on the illustration that accompanies the 10-year-old article and a signature on the contract. 
belong to the same person! What? As the court heard, this illustration was drawn 10 years ago by the newspaper reporter who found Mr. Drebber and interviewed him about his ordeal. And if you look closely, the reporter's signature can be found on the bottom right-hand corner of the drawing. And if you look at the contract here, which was signed between the witness and the victim last year, you can clearly see Mr. Osmond's signature at the bottom. Let me see now. Good lord, yes, they're identical! In short, the journalist who drew the illustration and wrote the article published in Mr. Drebber's 10 years ago was the victim of this case, Mr. Adi Osmond! <laughs> Objection. But explain to the court why! Why would that constitute for a motive for a witness to murder Osman? Well, if you think back, you'll remember that Mr. Trevor talked about that article in his testimony. At that point in time, you were a student of the University of London who dreamt on becoming a scientist. However, this Signal newspaper article changed your entire life. So, Mr. Osmond used to be a newspaper journalist, did he? He did, my lord. In fact, it's widely held belief that Mr. Osmond managed to position himself at the heart of the criminal network, thanks to many dubious connections he made during his time as a reporter. So you had to give up on your dream and leave the university. You lost everything. Eventually, you found yourself working in a field of science, but only in the shadows. And all because of that article, written by Mr. Osmond! ENOUGH! Alright, so this is where it really takes a toll on my throat. <laughs> <laughs> Stop this endless drivel about my life! What? Explain yourself, Mr. Drummer! Yes, it's true. I've had to leave the university as a result of that article. But it was just a straw that broke the camel's back. What do you mean? Almost every student of science in the facility was too poor to actually conduct any research. But they struggled on with their hypotheses anyway. We all did only to have them taken by vultures. Sooner or later, you knew your idea would be stolen and patented by some wretch or other after all. Good gracious! Making a name for yourself as a scientist in a climate like that was a miracle only a select few geniuses could ever hope to achieve. Personally, I was in one of those geniuses, so it was hardly a wretch. Being forced out of the university because of low gate was the best thing that could have happened to me! Mr. Drebber, do you genuinely believe that? Of course I do! Who's better placed to know whether or not I possess a talent for science than me? I'm sorry to say that your words don't ring true at all. How dare you! And I have evidence to prove it. How are you in a position to say anything about me? I don't know you from Adam! Fine, if you think you have evidence, go ahead, show it! What could you possibly have to disprove the idea that I was happy to leave university because I lacked talent? Uh, what 
Could it be that crossbow? Oh. Take that! Yeah. <gasps> Do you remember this, Mr. Trevor? We found it in your workshop. I is that a royal scion? Society trophy for excellence in science? What exactly is this trophy, Council? <clears throat> it's the greatest honor that can be bestowed upon a young scientist, my lord. No higher accolade who recognizes emerging talent and promises a bright future. Good gracious! Your prospects for the future were excellent, weren't they, Mr. Drebber? Because even then, you were a genius in your field. But you lost everything. You had no more future. Your talents would go to waste. As a result of one newspaper article. I don't know what you when you realized who Mr. Osmond was, but when it dawned on you he was the same journalist who ten years ago ruined your life. It, it, it's all abundantly clear. You had no intention of forgiving the man! Rottest course now. What? I admit all of it. What? what? What are you doing? It's exactly as the Japanese man said. I coerced into going along with this man's plot to murder the victim. On the condition that he kept my dirty secret ten years ago. No. Good lord! And only Van Zeeks had that same wall animation. Dr. Scythe! Do you realize what you're saying, woman? Oh, I think she does. It's all true. That day... When I arrived at the Crystal Tower and saw the birdcage... My heart nearly stopped beating. That memory from a decade ago that I had done my best to bury deep inside myself was the professor again staring straight in my face. And then, before I had a chance to react, I noticed something else. There was a note tucked inside the model's jacket. Scythe, you will go along with my plan. From someone who knows the truth about what really happened that night ten years ago. All the instructions were there on the notes. Every detail was meticulously written down. I had no choice but to do with what it said. I made the necessary altercation to the scene and fabricated the autopsy report as instructed. There was really no other choice. It had to be done to protect the judiciary. I can only apologize now. Wow. Why on earth would you buckle now? Well, there's no point in trying to hide it anymore, is there? Who would have done anything to stop it from coming out? Even collaborate in a murder. But the great lie about that execution ten years ago has been exposed. 
Whatever happens, I'm finished. So then, Mr. Trevor, what do you say to that? Your accomplice has admitted to everything. Surely it goes without saying. You admit your part too, then? I admit nothing at all! What? Have you forgotten that the kinesis machine was ripped to shreds by an explosion? Short of me admitted to a crime, there, there's really no possible way for you to prove I did anything wrong. No! This spell's just vibing. Order! 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 Whatever the man says, I admit everything. He threatened to expose my secrets, so I went along with his plan. And Lord Van Zeeks? Yes. I hope you accept my apologies. What happens next is in your hands, of course. I have heard more than enough now! I hereby present the final findings of this court! This trial is not the proper form in which to pursue the alleged wrongdoings of Mr. Trevor. The defendant is Prof Professor Albert Harebrain! Very true. It had slipped my mind. Isn't he one of your closest friends? As the court has heard, Dr. Scythe has admitted to the allegations brought by the defense. Thereby absolving the defendant of any possible guilt. Y you mean... At the present time, it is the conclusion of this court that the defendant was not involved in any wrongdoing. Does the prosecution have any objection? None, my lord. Oh, congratulations, Mr. Naruhoto! You've proven Professor Harebrain's innocence! Without further ado, then, the, uh, the, ad, the adjudition. Unless the prosecution or defense have any other matters to discuss. Uh, actually, hold on a quick sec. I will be right back. I'm gonna call the way. Hold on. It's a good thing I don't have to work tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. Uh, because, uh, I'm gonna need to make some, like, Something hot after this, like I don't know, maybe some hot, maybe some tea. <laughs> Cause man, I I I, I like voicing I like voicing Trevor, but the voice you I picked for him, it's just man. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> this is still a really good case. <laughs> it is. <laughs> Like, cause a lot, and I mean a lot happens in this back half. <laughs> like, it's like just when you think you're, just when you think you reached the bottom of the well, this case just goes, no, 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 there's still more to go. Down the rabbit hole you go. Woo. <laughs> woo, 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 woo. Uh.
<laughs> Sorry about that, introdu <laughs> that interruption, everybody. <laughs> anyway, continuing on. I don't know. This doesn't feel quite right. Why did Dr. Scythe suddenly admit it like that? Is everything alright, Mr. Naruhoto? Like you said before, the way this trial is to set to end now, the judge will certainly deliver a verdict of not guilty. Is this really what we want? What the defense should be pushing for now is... The defense objects to the trial ending at this time, my lord. I beg your pardon? We demand one final testimony. What? But, but you had it. You, you do realize I'm about to educate a favor of your client, I presume? What are you playing at now, my Nipponese friend? Why would you object start to the conclusion of the trial at this point? No defense lawyer in his right mind would do that. Mr. Naruhoto, what exactly are you thinking? The truth, the whole truth, and the way to bring it all out to the open. Right. Yes, in hindsight, Ah, uh, yes. One word of warning. I am the great Sherlock Holmes, after all. Uh, 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 apparently, my name's on chocolate bars. Now you excuse me, I have to go find myself a, 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 a lawyer. Uh, Not you, is though. That is that what he actually said? Huh? <laughs> I might be a little fazy, but I'm sure Mr. Sholmes knew. He must have deduced this would happen. Yes, I'm here in court to advocate for my client. And to secure an acquittal. Obviously. But that's not all. I believe I have a duty to the court to pursue the whole truth of this case until every last detail is laid bare. And that is why the defense calls for further testimony from Dr. Scythe. Testimony from me about what? About the nature of your collaboration with Mr. Eknock Drebber. Huh. In case it escapes your attention, I already admit to everything I did. The whole truth has already been revealed. So stop wasting everyone's time. Uh. As his lordships may very claim, your client will get acquittal you wanted for him. There is simply no point in procrastinating this misses further than another tedious cross-examination. Got him. <laughs> Bullseye. <laughs> so did you really just do that? Yes. Uh. <laughs> Pray forgive my, uh, my careless handling of the hollow bottle. I slipped. That guy, that guy will forgive you. <laughs> That's what you call it? What, what is your objection, Lord Van Zeeks? The prosecution also calls for supplementary testimony from the witness. Oh snap, you agree with him? Don't be stupid. There is more to this case that has yet to come to light. Then I will join my good friend in pursuing the facts until the bitter end. Your what? Poor Van Zeeks. This is most irregular, to say the least. However, as the prosecution also calls for it, I will uphold the request. Dr. Scythe, you will testify for the court. Explain the full extent of your involvement in the murder apparently committed by Mr. Drebber. I... very well. 
Seriously, I was going to give you this W, but I, I, I mean, I guess I'll put right, it down. Alright, here we go. Alrighty. <laughs> It all began in the scene when I saw the waxwork as a note tuck inside its jacket. The actual body of the victim as indicated in the note's instruction was beneath the experimental stage. The body has been arranged in a certain way to implicate the defense, which was my job. I enlisted the help of the entire forensic investor team to dress up the scene appropriately. The truth about the execution ten years ago is the state secret to the highest level. I had to protect it. So I was right. The stage and the machine were all specifically designed for deception. So it seems. It's almost technically prepared. You did well to see through us. You're a very shrewd boy. So kind of you to say. And what about the autopsy report, then? All I did was record the location of the body as being the crystal tower instead under the stage. That's all? That's terrible corruption! Only my team were aware of the deceit, and in only other my exempt instructions. Nobody else at Scotland Yard knew anything about it, I assure you. Hmm. You must be thankful for small mercies, I suppose. Well, I believe that testimony has clarified everything. There's no particular need for a cross-examination, I would say. No, I disagree. I can't shake the feeling that something's wrong. Just look at that expression on Dr. Sight's face. It's the defense right to cross-examine any witness following testimony. Yes. what is it about you Japanese that makes you all so dodgingly persistent? You wonder what it is? Protagonist syndrome. Yep. <laughs> We're all with it, baby. <laughs> Very well. If you if you so desire, Castle, proceed with the cross examination. Yes, my lord. All right. <laughs> We're almost at the end, guys. <laughs> Let's see if you can figure this one out. Okay, this one's gonna be tricky. Oh, we can't see this inside the jacket. The actual body of the victim is I think this might just be one I have to press everything on because I'm not seeing much of the gap. From what you described before, it sounds like the note was anonymous. Did you have any idea who was behind it? There are very few people I know about that really happened 10 years ago to start with. But anyway, I never heard of this engineer, so no, I had no idea. I s okay. it's, 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 it's a good one, it's a good one. Okay. Wait! Oh. What? Oh, fuck. Oh, what? no. It's different names, uh... You thought I was done. <laughs> no, God! <laughs> okay, you probably should just in case. No, uh, more my... More of my beautiful creation. Oh no, if my computer slow it down too. God, why? Why now? <sighs> I've come. <laughs> We've been streaming oh, for so long, my computer's actually slowing down. Fuck. Yeah. Come on, we are so close. We're so close. We're right there. We're right. We're right there. Okay, I'll just I'll just have to block it later, I guess, at this point, because like <laughs> it's not gonna go forward at the mark. Alright. Okay. But anyway, I've heard of this I have no idea. Yet despite not knowing who was behind the plan, you went along with it? I had no choice. Protect the Professor Seek was my only concern. But the horse is bolted now, and the stable door will never shut again. Scotland Yard's reputation will be immeasurably damaged as a result of this. Yes, thank you, Lord Van Zeeks. I am well aware of that. Alright. Uh, uh, chat, just make sure, uh... Oh, actually, hold on. Uh... 
I'm getting access to Twitch. Hold on. <laughs> I'm, I'm in. <laughs> I'm in. I got, no. I got to no. do it. No. <laughs> no. He, he got past. He got past my slow down. <laughs> How did he do it? <laughs> Actually, is this, is this what Sher Sherlock was doing the entire time? <laughs> okay, so one of one of those follows was legit. The other two are not. <laughs> oh, that's unfortunate. <laughs> okay, fan and uh, Brian. There we go. Okay. Good day, Yoda. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. All right. <gasps> so, as I understand it, what you found in the birdcage was the waxwork model. Where, where then was the victim's body? Hold it. The actual. Yeah. So you knew about the special construction that the stage used to carry out the trick, then? It was quite obvious to have happened with the victim in the waxwork. And you switched the two over, didn't you? In other words, you record the victim's body having been discovered on the crystal tower and the waxwork? I wrapped it and sent it to the carriage to the specific address at the specific time. And why were you given such instructions? Presumably so it could be recovered by Trevor and returned to Madame Despair's. I see. And then you put the bird cage on the experimentation stage? Yes, although someone obviously made a mistake about which cage should go where. I thought I made perfectly clear that to the team, but still. I suppose you were focused on the victim's body, that being more important detail. When you say arranged, I presume you mean with this? Yes, the instruction the engineer note said is something along the lines of... Fabricate some evidence to make it clear that the hair braid alone could have killed Asmin. So, you mean that was your doing?! I fetched Hairbrain's ridiculous screwdriver from the stage... ...and took it with me, alone in the abyss under the stage where the birdcage has fallen. Alone, Doctor? I didn't feel it would be appropriate to involve anybody else in that particular part of the deception. There was a void under the stage where I found the birdcage lying in the dirt. I approached it and leaned down and slowly opened it up. Then I took the screwdriver in both hands and plunged it into the man's chest. And then you noted the fake autopsy report as a fictitious cause of death. Exactly. So, the actual cause of death was... The trauma resulted in the 30-foot drop. My word! What is this, Mr. Sato? Something about Dr. Side's last statement. It's playing on my mind, that's all. Yes, mine too. Dr. Scythe! There's really no need to shout. I can hear you perfectly well. The defense calls for you to add what you just said to your formal testimony. Oh, which part? What part do I want her to supplement her testimony with is the real cause of death. The real cause of death. The real cause of death being the fall furry thief. That part. Fine, if that's what you want, just stop yelling, please. The prosecution concurs. Very well. You will supplement your testimony now with this. And I also agree. If you will, my lord.
最后啊。Yeah, because I don't think there was any fingerprints or anything on this, so we couldn't. <laughs> Make, uh, yeah, there was nothing else on this, so it can't be that one at all. I mean, there wouldn't be any fingerprints on her anyway because she wears yeah, gloves. Yeah, she does have gloves. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hold it! You're quite sure of that? It was a result of a broken neck. Yes, as a professional, that was more than apparent. You never know just by looking at the photograph of the victim, though, would you? No, that's very true. Obviously not. Which is precisely why the coroner needs to determine the actual facts. Yes, assuming they can be trusted. There's no point calling her assessment into question without evidence. Let's get back to the testimony. Very well. You. I just see it if it's another one of the statement kind of things like that, that balloon one has me now second guessing myself on this shit. <laughs> <laughs> okay, tuck it into his jacket. He got you. Oh, uh, hold on. Let me see the victim's photo again. Hmm. Um, what are you thinking? It doesn't look like there's any trauma to the... I don't really see anything weird with his neck, though, kind of deal. I know if... I know you can also change state. You can change statements if you want. Yeah. Um... Uh, this is. Uh, where's the autopsy? It's it's the same. Yeah. Mm. I think it might be. It might be the other one I need. Hold it! Dr. Scythe, what you said before about what you did to the victim's body, I believe that may be significant, so can you change your supplementary statement to explain that instead? Very well. Okay, what does this one say? I stood over the victim's corpse. Hold it! So it was you that stabbed Mr. Osmond with this? Yes, from the east of the section, I assure you. No requirements required. Well, welcome change. The victim died instantly from a snapped neck. All I did was carry out the instructions I've been given. And that thing she has ever moved out. I imagine you didn't bat an eyelid when you drove the weapon into his body. There was no need to bat my eyelids. And what else did you do to twist the facts? Remind the court, why don't you? If you wish. Uh, is it anything with the actual case itself? Do you want a hint? I would think maybe right now it'd be like, how did she actually get a good stab at him? Kind of deal. Through this cage, would that be it? So what, how, how did she, how did she, what did she say that, how did she stab him? Step over the top of the cage and plunge with a screwdriver. 
So she was on. So so she stood over it. Yeah. Do the cage itself at that point. Okay, so if you stood over someone and stabbed him, what would the what would the what would it look like? She would, like, the, the cage itself wouldn't allow that? Is that what we're getting at? Or... Um, okay, so she said she took the screwdriver, mm -hmm. he was laying, he, he was pretty much supposedly laying down dead, and yeah. stabbed on, on top of him. So what does the, and what does the picture show? That he's upright? Objection! Okay, well, we'll, we'll go with that. <laughs> I've got a nasty feeling that this inconsistency points out an extremely uncomfortable truth. Yep, there it is! Here's the track! <laughs> <laughs> Finally, I waited. I waited for this track to appear. What? What a noise is the Magic Council? Have you lost your tongue? I apologize, my lord. Dr. Scythe, in that last statement of yours, there's just one point. That seems to defy explanation. <laughs> Out with it, my nerd friend. There's an obvious inconsistency between your description and this photograph! Which shows the victim in the birdcage following the events that led to his death. The court has already examined this photograph in depth. There's nothing new we can learn from it. Yes, we have already considered it. That's true. But we now know the facts to be different. What do you mean? I believe we should let the defense explain. Yeah, man, chill. Where in this photograph would you see the, 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 the alleged inconsistency with the witness's statement? Look closely at the blood stain on the victim's chest. It clearly extends downward to Ah, okay. <laughs> I like Ah Yeah, okay. And, and why is that significant counsel? It's a visit was stabbed moments before the Kinesis machine was set in motion. That's certainly expected to Ah! Of course! No, that's not what happened! Exactly, my lord! Dr. Scythe made it clear in her testimony just now that the point of which she stole Mr. Hair Gray's screwdriver and stabbed the victim was after the grand deception was set in motion when the birdcage had fallen out of sight. From the shape of it, it's clear the birdcage would have fallen on its side after the 30-foot drop, and the victim would have been stabbed while it's inside the birdcage in that position. The blood from the wound should have been spread out equally in all directions. For it for, to form a longitudinal appearance we see in the picture is inconceivable. <gasps> and she's like, he actually caught that. <laughs> Given the victim's blood seeped vertically downwards from the wound, it must have been the case when you stabbed Mr. Osman, he was standing up. In short, Dr. Scythe, your last testimony was TOTAL FABRICATION! <laughs> I knew it. I was right. Now I've identified the contradiction. There's only one way to explain the facts. We've all been under a great misapprehension here. What? How's that? What sort of misapprehension? Dr. Scythe. You claim you were cornered into helping Mr. Trevor as a result of the note left by the waxwork. You claim to have made changes to the scene of the crime to implicate the defendant. You claim 
you were offered a fake autopsy report to cover your tracks. But one of those claims is out is an out and out lie. Because the question of what the bloodstain really tells us has only one possible answer. If that's the case, what is it, man? Counsel, you clearly struck upon a revelation. Now let the now tell the cook what it is. What part of Dr. Sykes' story is shown to be a lie by the constant contradiction in her testimony? The answer is very simple if you consider the sequence of events. If, when the victim was stabbed, the blood would seep downwards as it did, we can be sure that the victim had been either sitting or standing upright at the time. But you rightly pointed out the birdcage had fallen on its side when it fell beneath the stage. Yes, it would, which tells us that the victim must have been positioned on his own accord. Objection. That's impossible! The man was dead, remember? No! That's a misapprehension! When the birdcage fell from the stage to the void below, it must have hit the ground with considerable force. I'm sorry, guys. Ugh. Okay. They're all banned. Good. Band. 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 Okay, just make it sure. Going for all of these. Band. Band. Okay, all banned. Good. Sorry about that again, guys. Anyway, continuing on. But Mr. Osmond didn't die from the fall. He probably lost conscience for a while, but when he came around, he got it onto his feet and climbed out of the sage. Just as Dr. Scythe appeared. The victim was in fact alive at the point of time. It changes everything. <laughs> Mr. Adi Osmond's killer wasn't the defendant, Professor Albert Harebray. Nor was it the mastermind behind the stage trickery, Mr. Egnock Drebber. But it was you, Dr. Courtney Scythe! Uh, uh, <gasps> order! 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 Can, can this possibly be true? Have you been taken before, fool? It was you, was it? You killed him? You hoped by admitting that you would accomplice to Mr. Drebber's scheme, the trial would end, before you were accused of a far worse crime. Cold-blooded murder! <sighs> Don't you do shut up! You're so desperate now making all this up! I said you would do something like that! I assure you, the defense is not desperate, Doctor. 
Mr. Narahota has established the facts using evidence and logic alone. Ha! Logic? Don't make me laugh! Sadly, your logic has a gaping hole in it! What? What do you mean? Have you thought it was so obvious? The motive, boy! You're lacking a motive! What possible reason could I have to kill Mr. Asmin? Asmin was involved in a number of criminal activities, a cocoon to theft and murder. But there's no known connection to Dr. Sight there. Uh. Hmm. I'm rather relieved to say it does seem somewhat far-fetched. True, there's no obvious motive, but there's still something in the back of my mind. I feel sure I've seen something somewhere that hints to why the coroner might have done this. Yes, I might have tampered with the crime scene and the cohorts of fake report. But murdering someone for no reason is a very different story. OBJECTION! No, when you were questioned about a possible reason you would want to kill Mr. Osman, something did come to mind. What? What was it, Council? In light of the court at once! Yes, we saw it yesterday, didn't we? Something that seemed strange. We had no reason to suspect it at the time. There's a particular object that explains why Mr. Sype wanted to kill Il Osman. I think, uh... I think it's gotta be the mask. It's the iron mask. Oh, fuck. You lost me. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> fuck! I got low, low red, so. Uh, uh sorry, Mr. Narahoto, but why the iron mask? Well, uh, of all the things I say yesterday, it left the grace impression, so. Clearly, you have no idea what you're talking about. Uh, I think I might have said the wrong thing. Forgive the interruption, Dr. Scythe. But what my colleague meant to say was scallops. <laughs> Perhaps that makes a little more sense to you. Okay, uh, yeah. Uh, Surprise you don't get penalized on that one, huh? Huh? Uh, uh, of course! <laughs> Did you say scallops? Scapples! <laughs> 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 scallops. <laughs> yeah, it was your meal of scallops that led us to the trope. <laughs> Susana really came in with that W with you at the end. <laughs> it would appear that the word has struck a chord, Doctor. You, come on, out with it. It was yesterday when we visited your laboratory. Look at all this materials. And blood. <laughs> Five hundred scallops. Five hundred scalpels. A month? At first, I wondered what on earth you would be doing that- using that many scalpels for. But actually, I realize now it's not scalpels themselves that are significant. It's the money for them, disappearing every month from the department's accounts! Osmond's criminal organization relied heavily on extortion for its funding. Tracing the money to forensic investigations team account to find where it was going. Extremely straightforward. <sighs> Ten years ago, when Mr. Osman was still a journalist and wrote the article about Mr. Trevor, he may have well stumbled upon information as well as when he was researching the story. Information relating to Dr. Sight's darkest secret he would use to rack money from her for the next decade. The darkest secret? Good lord, you mean... I don't know what happened on the night of that execution ten years ago, but clearly the opportunity to rid yourself of that menace was too tempting to pass up. <sighs> so in the end, you weren't cor concerned at all, were you? 
You did it entirely of your own free will. You stabbed Mr. Osman in the heart with all your might. To silence the blackmailer who knew your deacon's darkest secret forever! You'll never understand! None of you! What we had to keep covered up all these long years. As very little of the machine remains after it was ripped up apart by the bomb, the truth of this case can never be properly established, unless you speak out. And if you decide not to, it's very possible that Courtney Seif will escape punishment for her crimes. Please, sir, owe up to what you've done, and tell the court the truth about what happened. Ten years ago, you told the truth. And you were robbed of the bright and successful future as a result. I can certainly understand your bitterness and your concern right now, however. This is surely your chance you've been waiting for, to sever your hold to that fate's had her over you for all these years. Super high voltage instantaneous kinesis. I mean, really. It's that adult brain mock scientists that are the worst, you know. They don't recognize the fact that they don't have talent. They can't even get that right. And so they end up chasing impossible dreams, having a right of faith in their abilities. They go on and on about their wonderful hypotheses, their stupid eyes shining like a like a little child's. They make me sick. I can abide their foolishness. Careful, Mr. Trevor. I was particularly pleased with the Kinesis machine. I made it for quite a show. It made for quite a show, didn't it? So you admit it? You admit that it was nothing more than a sham made for the purpose of killing the victim? Yes, I admit it. I did it all in the name of revenge. Revenge for the future that Mr. Osmond's martyr article had deprived you ten years earlier. But the revenge you sought didn't stop at Osmond, did it? Which is where that very particular waxwork comes in. Yes, I see. The condemned convict you saw rising from the grave in Lowgate Cemetery ten years ago. If your account of these events are all true... Then obviously Scotland Yard couldn't afford to acknowledge what happened. Even if it meant discrediting a young, a bright young man and crushing any future career he might have had. So your plan required that you abduct that particular waxwork model in order to exact your revenge on Scotland Yard as well, or on Dr. Scythe to be precise. was a year ago. By some extraordinary twist of fate, Asmund turned up at my workshop. He didn't remember who I was, of course. He just wanted to employ my services as an engineer. And he happened to have a paper with him. An article on the front page caught my eye about the coroner who'd handled that bogus autopsy be appointed head of a new forensic team. When I learned that news, my cognitive processes started to devise the plan. What a horrid tale. He 
crop to be of my future, so I wanted to use them as a will of wiles against him for revenge, and have that rotten scarlet yard eating out of my hand at the same time. I wanted them all to suffer the same humiliation I had to suffer! Your actions against those who wronged your future were justified as revenge, at least to yourself. Certainly, no one has the right to destroy another man's prospects, especially for purely selfish gain. And yet, in carrying out your plan, you did exactly that to someone else, didn't you? Did I? Professor Hairbray's only crime was passion for his hypothesis, but you had no commotion for sacrificing his future to affect your revenge. You knew that he would be forever branded a failure and a fraud. Perhaps life treated you unfairly ten years ago, and others' misconduct left your life in tatters. But remember this. Your own actions resulted in exactly the same thing for another perfectly innocent young man. I... I... Zeke's, what's up, Dr. Scythe? An immediate warrant for... <laughs> there we go. Uh, for her arrest has been granted as she's been remedied in custody, my lord. I presume she will face trial in the upcoming days along with Mr. Drebber. A most regrettable situation indeed. She's made great contributions to our profession over the years. It really is a hard truth to swallow. However, that is a topic for some future occasion. For now, Professor Hairbrain! Oh, um, yes? <laughs> I kind of slipped out for like four hours in that. <laughs> It seems there was a great deal more to your experiment than you realized. However, I think we can assume now that all of the uh, that all of the sort the all the sorted details have been brought to light. This has been a very long and profound trial, but I'm pleased to say you are absolved of all guilt. Very long is indeed right on that one. Wait, 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 hang on, wait, hang on. I'm hang getting on. it, I'm getting it. What, what? <laughs> Bot. Bot. Ah, oh, damn. Okay. Don't worry. Okay, it's not a hate rain one, so we're, we're fine there. Okay. <laughs> this whole experience has taught me a very great but painful lesson. I've... I've been... I mean, me, this dedicated scientist, this... this de this devotee of natural philosophy. I've been selfish and self-centered and above all, a fool. Professor. I've spent my life thinking of nothing but my research. Misguidedly believing that I could do whatever I set my mind to, despite my lack of talent. <coughs> and the worst of uh, the worst, worst of it is, in the process, I've caused others pain and misery. Uh, 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 uh. Hold on, just a sec. Bye. A computer's kind of chugging a lull. Hold on. 
We're almost there. We're almost yeah, we're there. Almost there. <laughs> this sometimes happens when the computer has to stream for like four hours long yeah. kind of deal. Uh, Patrick, can you still hear me? Yeah, I can. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now. Okay. Yeah, my computer's just a little frozen right now. Hold on. Oh. Whew. Okay, just give it a sec. Hold on. Try to get it back all up. Just a sec. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm almost back up. <laughs> Wait, uh, Jason, Sophie, can you still hear me right now? Yeah. That is... That is one tired computer. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah, okay, we just, uh, yeah, okay, here we go, okay, here we go, others who are, who are far, far greater people than I, what? Are you muted? Why was I muted during that? What the fuck? <gasps> that was weird. Uh, okay, then I'll, I'll re read my lines real fast. Uh, and then. Oh, no, yeah. no, Professor, that's not true. Don't tar yourself with the same brush as Trevor. What happened was his doing and his alone. His outcome was his fate, not yours. You're not to blame in the same way. And the duration of which you referred to earlier. Calling yourself a fool and town to see them. It should be. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Alright, right. right, we're good. Okay, I think, yeah. The man has no idea. To believe in yourself and work your fingers to the bone to realize your dream. It, that's laughable. That's laudable, not laughable. No one has the right to deride your another of such choices. Oh. <laughs> Thank you, Baroque. So, 
Ladies and gentlemen of the jury. Yes, my lord. It is this court's expectation, expectation that you find the defendant not guilty of the charge of which he stands accused. I presume there are no objections. None from me, my lord. Certainly not. This trial has really made me think, but this is the right decision. It's all, it's all been proven, it's all been proven methodically and rigorously. I have no, no misgivings whatsoever. What? Is he done? Is it over? I don't know what's become of the yard these days. I don't recognize the place. Very well. In that case, I hereby pronounce the defendant not guilty. It's gonna be a long drink when we get back to the apartment on this one. <laughs> Court is adjourned! <laughs> Imagine being a, a scientist going to the fair and then getting wrapped up in this yeah. conspiracy. <laughs> it's over. That's some trial. Why they get fucking that. lightly? <laughs> I had to go through an entire computer reboot to get it to finish. <laughs> <laughs> Professor, what a splendid outcome, isn't it? How it is, is it? Congratulations, Professor Harebrain. Mr. Naruhodo. Miss Suzato. I am truly, truly... Beside myself in gratitude, how can I ever thank you enough? I'm just glad it's been cleared up that you realize you were just caught up in a bad situation. Ah, right now, you know, if I if, if I had that piece of scrap money, ah, I'd give the whole lot to you, every penny. Well, that's very kind, but I'm just a student, so. We don't need any financial reward. Your acquittal is more than enough. Oh dear, oh, what, what can I do? Aha! How about this? A memento! The paper about my hypothesis to decide! <gasps> oh wow, Ace points out that trial in game time was <laughs> six hours long, <laughs> that one. Good lord! Ah. <laughs> uh... Well, just a memento then. Thank you. I've been wondering, Professor. What are you going to do now? Oh, oh my, yeah, yes. What am I going to do? My hypothesis and my great machine lie in ruins. But still, it's been too long since I was last in London, so perhaps I'll enjoy some sightseeing. And my sixth word, the great, the great exhibition will us up here too. If if new inspirations hit me. Oh yes, that's a wonderful idea. I I can't allow that. Lord von Zix, what are you doing here? <laughs> Broke. Oh, I'm, well, then, I'm, I'm sorry you had to go through that, Albert. Well. If I'm honest, it it was terrifying. You were like a great you were like a great demon behind your best there, snarling down on your play. <laughs> You're one of the few true friends I have. I couldn't leave it to anybody else to handle the prosecution or the defense. Sorry? Or the defense did did I just hear that right? I always knew you had my best itches at heart, don't worry. Ah, uh, how about you show me around while I'm here in town? It's been, it's been a lot of time since we left university. We have a lot to catch up on. Listen, Albert. In a few days, your acquittal will be made official. When that happens, you 
must head straight to Dover. I'll accompany you. What? From there, you'll cross the channel and make your way back to Germany. I've already purchased the tickets. But, but no! Hold on a minute, Baruch! What about the greatest and greatest ambition? This isn't the chance of a lifetime for me! I want to look no. around! No sightseeing, Albert. Give up on the idea. Uh, sometimes it's hard to see any worth in those eyes, Baroque. Um, Lord Von Zeeks? What's all this about? Uh oh, what, what's all this about? Unnecessary precaution. Yes, I. I think I understand. You do? Well, Iris told me when you met Lord Van Zeeks at his office some days ago. He asked about Mr. Natsumi was doing. Yes, that's right. I remember being surprised at the time and thinking it was nice of him to ask. The point is, Mr. Natsumi is still alive and well. Even though it's been more than six months now since he stood trial for the Reaper as a prosecutor. Uh, you, you mean the Reaper's influence doesn't stretch overseas? Those in the Reaper's sights meet their end of days or sometimes months after their acquittal. That's been the pattern up to now. But of course, we know that both Mr. Natsume and Gina were completely innocent. True. And perhaps that governs the Reaper's actions. The truly innocent are spared. But I don't want to take any chances with a close personal friend. But Baroque! Like the mustache Nipo needs, this man should leave the country without delay. That's why I'm packing him to Germany at once! R right. Does your friendship package get any say in it? Goodness! Was this your attention all along, Lord Van Zeeks? In court, where people think of him as the Reaper, this man seems absolutely merciless. And yet, sometimes I feel as though he does. Um, I do. I don't understand him at all. It's time to go, Albert. Pa back to the prison for the time being. Yes, you're right. Well then, Mr. Narahodo. Thank you so very- thank you so much for everything! Not all, Professor. It's a pleasure getting to know you. Best wishes, Professor Hairbrain. Well, once the dust is settled, you must come and visit me in Germany! Anyway, goodbye for now! Now, my Nipponese friend. Oh, uh, yes? I thought you were called too. We have matters to discuss. Can you spare me some time? Y you want to talk with me? I'll be waiting in the courtroom in ten minutes. Well, that was strange. For some reason, I didn't get the sense of impending doom as he walked away this time. The Enigma, Barack von Zeeks. What does he want to discuss, I wonder? The answer awaits in the courtroom, I suppose. There it goes then. <laughs> thank, thank God. I thought for sure that was going to be the... <laughs> they were going to be... No, uh, chapter four <laughs> kind of deal. All right, here we go. So are you satisfied? You saved the godliest scientist from a great injustice. Um, yes, I think so. I'm relieved, at least. That man's innocence could be proven. Anyway... I imagine you've been wondering, where my anon anonymously towards you, my Nipponese, comes from? Animosity. A animosity, sorry. Okay! Deep lore, here we go!
Hmm. Well, at first I thought you just didn't like me. I imagine you saw me as a pretentious child from an unimportant land who had no business being here. But now, I think differently. You clearly know our ways, so I would guess that some specific incident led to your thorough dislike of my race. Will you tell me what happened, please? The Professor. I thought I'd never hear that name in this courtroom again, to be honest. He... he took your brother's life. Clint. My brother was Clint Von Zeeks. Sixteen years ago, when I was just in my teens, he was already the dictator of prosecution. Director of prosecution. <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> dictator. And he had eaten a member of the judiciary. I looked up to him. He was everything I aspired to be. He was involved in the establishment of the judiciary. Justice systems in foreign countries as well. There were exchange programs between Britain and other nations then too, to share our knowledge and ideas. As part of one of those programs, three judicial students came to Britain from your homeland, the Empire of Japan. Oh. If it was 16 years ago, then one of them could have been my father. Of course. I remember Dr. Mikotoba well. I had no idea. I was a minor at the time, training at the prosecutor's office. One day, Clint introduced me to three visiting Nipponese. So, you actually met my father? He and his colleagues were polite and impeccable. They were adept at what their work and exacting their standards. It was my first encounter with the Nipponese spirit, and made a very great impression upon me. But six years later, that's when it happened. The investigation was going nowhere, there were no suspects even, just an ever-growing list of victims. And in the end, my brother came to be one of them, the last in fact, before the case was finally solved. I'm so sorry, Lord Von Zeeks. Truly. Clint was always ready to put his life on the line for justice anyway. So he wouldn't have wanted it any other way. He lost his life to the killer, but it was a victory in the end. For me personally, though, it was a great loss. I found myself in a very dark place indeed. I finally found out the killer's identity. The reason why no one had been able to catch this man sooner ceased to be a mystery. Been hiding in plain sight all the time. In plain sight? Are you aware of political events ten years ago? There was a period of extreme sensitivity and diplomacy between the British and Japanese empires. A new treaty was being forged, I think. Correct. The Arogo Japanese Treaty of Friendship and Navigation was being concluded. The leaders of both countries were in deep, extensive political discussions. Which is why this particular killer's appearance in court was conducted as a closed trial. If the British public had known the identity of the killer, not only were the treaties being in jeopardy, but our two nations were very well ended up at war. What? A, a, a war? Between Britain and Japan? But that would need... Oh my! You mean to say the professor was... When the trial reached its conclusion earlier, I thought to myself, yes. It's time. Time for you to come face to face with this hideous monster. <laughs> I borrowed the key for the mask from the proprietress of the Waxwork Museum. So see for yourselves now. Confirm it with your own eyes. The truth that's been hidden this past decade.
That's the professor? Yes, that's him. Until now, a thought never even crossed my mind. That the mass murderer whose crimes shook Britain as never before was Japanese. Wait, wait a minute. That face, I feel as though I've seen it somewhere. It's strangely familiar. Return. As he stood there before me. It's been a very long road. Thank you. Thank you for guiding my friend here when I could not. It, it was an honor. I knew you wouldn't die that easily. I owe you thanks, too, for taking good care of that in my absence. Oh. Karuma, great blade of the Asogi clan, passed down through the generations. When we left Japan, this sword was at my friend's side. The Japanese man's katana is his soul, and he couldn't be parted from it. But then, when the incident happened, it was Susato-san's wish that I inherit the sword, and I've kept it with me ever since, along with my memories of the friendship we shared. this by my side. I always felt that you were watching over me somehow. believe it. This mass murderer is Kazuma's father. Ryonosuke, we have much to talk about, but now is not the time.
I'll be seeing you. That's all Kazuma said. Before he turned and left us there in the courtroom. So he's living after image of the man who took my brother's life, is he? Yes, Kazuma Asogi, my best friend. Three months ago, when Lord Strongheart introduced us, I had an inkling there was something there, some connection. But why did Strongheart do that? Why did he make Kazuma Lord Von Zeke's apprentice? And when he was suffering from amnesia too? The man was apprehended, even executed. But his legacy just won't die. That's the sad truth. Anyway, that's all I had to say. I thank you for meeting with me as I asked. Ten years ago, my grandmother took me to the railway station. We were there to meet my father from the train. For me, it was the first time I've ever seen him. Poor Sasa, all this tied up with painful memories for her too. She's never talked about this for me before, though. It took time to adjust having father around. When it started to get used to it, he called me into his study one day. He told me that a great friend of his has passed away in London. And that the friend had left behind a son. A boy, seven years my senior. Father told me the boy has made a promise to his late father. So he was studying to become a defense lawyer. I wanted to help, so... I studied to become a qualified judicial assistant. As I'm sure you worked out. That young man's name was Kazuma Asogi. So you see, that's how he and I met. For a brief moment, my great friend had returned, only to disappear again all too soon. But in that fleeting encounter, something stirred, something that had been dormant for a long time, as if great wheels had been set in motion I could almost hear them creaking into life. In some ways, it was the end of a chapter, but in many, it was the start of a new one. And there uh, we go. Uh, chapter three is done. <laughs> so yeah. So, uh, so yeah, there you go. So, where the fuck do we start? Like, <laughs> uh, all right, you know what? Uh, uh, you, uh, you know what? Let's take it one step at a time. So, first step, what do you think about case three? Uh, I easily think that's been the best case in the game so far. Full stop. Uh, honestly, the best case of DGS, uh, like easily, I would say. Yes. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Like, man. That's like, again, I, I know I keep saying this, but, like, I know DGS1, I was kind of mucky for, for out, and I really kind of feel like that game is just more of a prologue to this game, because this game has not really slowed down at all, at any point. I am so engaged at this point into this gen. I did not think that would be the case after playing through that first game. Oh my god, that is one of the best cases in the entire series, full stop. J uh, wow! <laughs> case three, it's like, like, case three is long, but, it, but man, it is good. I think that's the biggest thing that really bugs me about DGS1 going back is pacing. I think a lot of the cases just feel really long, even if they aren't. 
kind of deal. And I think that having it split up into two days definitely helps with that. But just mm -hmm. the revelations and just all the details and intricacies that go into every case just make them so much more interesting this time uh, for me. <laughs> The way they the, the way they have this really nice setup for this case and they find a way to intertwine it with the with the case that happened a few years ago naturally. And also how every time you think you you figure it out, the rabbit hole just goes deeper and deeper. I did not I did not think Scythe was going to be like a player this early on <laughs> after them introducing I thought that was gonna be like case five kind of shit going down, honestly. <laughs> Like, the, uh, the fact when it shows the blood stain, I'm like, oh, shit! <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, what's that? Um, okay, I guess uh, to, to talk about... Guess, let's uh, let's talk about the case three specific characters and then move on to the main players, I think might be the best way <laughs> to, to go about this, because, uh, Hair Bray, I felt was a good good one, uh, for a defendant. I, I like that he has that big revelation, uh, in the first half of the game. <laughs> case if he did... If he didn't have that big revelation, he would not be, um, uh, he would be on the lower ends of defendants. Yeah, but the fact that he had that realization of just, I, I was playing for a pawn, pawn the entire time, and like, I will be better, I promise, kind of deal, <laughs> like, yeah. He's, he's a genuinely nice scientist, which is a good parallel to Ignok Drever, which we'll get to. Yeah, uh, but yeah, Harry was a very, uh, I liked him a lot, uh, of course, I'm really happy that Gina's back uh, as a player, and I, I absolutely love Toby. Toby is the best boy of DGS, and you can't change my mind. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, yeah, like, Gina's design and Gina's whole demeanor is just, it's Again, just brighter. I, I loved her in DGS 1, and I'm really happy that they kept it going <laughs> in this game as well. She, uh -huh. Like, I know she's a Sherlock character, but if I can best compare her, she, she pretty much became this game's Emma Sky. Just a, <laughs> yeah. a character that appeared, rel like, somewhat re relevant to the first case and then gets promoted to a important role for the second. Like, it, it works very naturally. It just, yeah. It's nice to see Gina happy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I really like the whole thing with the Wax Museum and Madam Spell. I thought was one of the more uh, a fun kind of uh, witnesses. Yeah, that we've had so far. I really, I really like her entire business and like the lengths her family goes to and stuff like that are really interesting to me. Uh, I don't. I feel like the business is gonna close now at this point with the information that's now on life. But we'll see. Uh, I, I hope. I think Baroque still has to pay her for that wax. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I will say, uh, the uh, the case itself, uh, easily the best. The best jurors. Oh yeah. Thank oh yeah. I was I I, I kept like snidely remarking. I am so thankful none of them this time were clearly related to the case in some way. Thank you for that, God. <laughs> Cause it's like I like the juror system when they aren't just being a we need them for the plot to advance kind of deal. Like when they're not evidence. Yeah. Like this one actually worked very well with how how it was done. This is, I think, next to case three of the original uh, game, the uh, best the jurors have been full stop uh, for them. Uh, uh... So I guess on to uh, to uh, the... We can either talk about... Well, there's not that much to really talk about but Dr. Seiss. Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. Seiss was, was there. Uh, you know, I feel like more of the level that this was getting to kind of deal was kind of where we were at case one, five of the original game uh but now just like that the their system is deliberately corrupt and they were getting away with this kind of deal is definitely gonna shake up for four and five of this mm -hmm. game uh so uh, she's kind of more of a plot to get to that point sort of deal so uh -huh. I, I have more to say about scythe but that probably talks more about later later stuff in the right. in the game and the development of this game but All whatnot right. but she, uh, i'll say she's a has a really nice design and her theme is, is a bob yes <laughs> i want uh, no more about her daughter because i feel like oh, she's not yeah. done yet yeah. uh so you got drever yeah drever i think drever's been one of the better villains uh so far into here he's got a very you understand why he did it i like the rug being pulled off that he he masterminded all of it, but uh, Zyke got the last laugh kind of deal. Mm -hmm. 
deal into that. Yeah. I like the... I, I like that basically his entire life was ruined by, by this man and he had to work his way into the shadows to kind of make up. And I, I love the moment at the end with Ryanosuke basically say, say uh, of like, you were going to do the exact same thing to that man, the kind of deal. Mm -hmm. And that just, yeah. that just, that sealed it at that point. <laughs> oh, ah! Oh, Discord, Discord randomly decided to just boot me out. I don't know why. Uh, anyway, uh, got the last laugh. yeah, yeah. And, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> as I was saying, that that part of Rianosuke totally hit it home for for me <laughs> on that. I, I say both him and Tinspo were, are pretty much the knockout favorites of this case. Yeah. And, and like it was stated earlier, Ignat is a character from the from from the Sherlock stories. He was actually the antagonist of of Holmes and Watson's first case, and the book that- and the story he comes from is A Study in Scarlet. Ah, where Scarlet Study comes from, I'm assuming. Hey. Yeah. Yep. Uh, I feel like the- I think that the thing that makes- that makes, like, um, Trevor, like, one of, like, um, like, the better villains of Ace Attorney is the fact that you could totally sympathize with his physician. Yeah. Like, uh, a, like, like, because he was on his, cause he was on his way to be a big hit in like the science world, but because of, but because of circumstances that were outside of his control, his life was ruined. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, and I, I, I love how the wax figure ended up getting back in, involved into it. Uh, again, just a lot of things of like you can kind of get the idea of where it's going, but like the intricacies of where. <laughs> <laughs> this is like the case where I really felt Shutakumi's writing was back kind of deal. <laughs> this was the case I felt it on the most out of anything, and that especially goes into Lord Von Zeke's at this point. <laughs> Cause... Uh, uh, wait, uh, real quick, uh, wait, uh, hey, I, wait, I think I, I think I had something. I had something in my brain. I had something in my brain, and then it just... Oh, wait, no, I had it. I think one of my favorite moments of this case is the fact that when uh, Ryanosuke lays it out on, like, uh, it's, it's, it's our team's best corner ever, and this wax figure is involved somehow, and everybody just goes, Yo, this man's kind of stupid. <laughs> <laughs> yo, 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 that's that like, this man's kind of stupid. And then you go further along, and you just go, Oh, this rabbit hole. Oh, 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 wait a minute. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, maybe he ain't so stupid. Oh, no. Maybe we're the stupid ones. <laughs> like, half of the, half, like, a chunk of this case is just talking about the whole Professor Giglio, and it somehow doesn't, doesn't, so off from the case in general. Yeah. Like that's that's actually really that like, it felt really like totally the A that. it felt like all of the A, B, and C plots actually all tied together really nicely this time. Mm -hmm. Kind yeah. of deal. Yeah. <laughs> Especially when we get into uh I, I really want to talk about Van Zeke's in this trailer uh, this trial, because this uh I I didn't think too highly about Zeke's for a long time because I always felt like eh, he's kind of just been a their prosecutor, you know, it's like he's always angry to you. Even before we get the reveal at the end, Von Ze Zeke's care. This has totally changed my entire view on how he operated and stuff like that. I really like that he wouldn't let anybody else prosecute this case. He had to do it himself to make sure that it was done correctly uh, kind of deal. Uh, I like the stuff that we get with his brother uh, being involved into there and that he... Now, it feels like him and Ryanosuke are actively working together now, at mm. this point. Uh, like, yeah, like... like, like, I, would, like I would say, like, this is this trial and the rest of it is a start where we, where we now we learn more about, uh, 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 about Baroque. Is and where more of his character really, really come, comes to light. That's why, I'm like, that's why it's actually, it's kind of hard to judge Baroque in DGS one, and you have a play DGS two. That's because in DGS one, he's care like you don't, you really don't know anything about him, so it's like, hard to judge him. You know he's a, you know from the he is a just prosecutor, but you don't know know him until until this this case, which is like the missing link that 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 finally clicks his character together for me. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I like how he's like 
how he actively tries to make measures against the <laughs> curse and stuff like that. Yeah. Which I really, I really appreciate that as well. <laughs> now all the pieces are finally coming together, and I'm really appreciating yeah. uh, oh. like the character now. This is also <laughs> like winning the chapter where they establish the where they like really like where like they just reestablish it and push it hard at the fact that this whole thing with the Reaper has that these has like. Like Baroque himself isn't involved in it, but it's but it's but 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 for whatever reason, it's always it always it's always centered around him. Yeah. Mhm. Mm and and speaking of DGS one, another reason why I love this case is how it parallels case three of DGS DGS one and overall Ryunosuke's overall development. Yeah. Because in I... those cases, <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, 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 keep going, go on, go on. Like, in both cases, he, he's pretty much put into a situation where he has the chance to, he gets his not guilty verdict, and but the, has a choice of whether to pursue the truth or not, and and finally, in this case, he finally able to do it successfully, which also leads to one of my, my favorite music transitions, which is Prelude to Pursuit, just like, yeah. the most... <laughs> Like, what if we just make a high track to the pursuit theme? It's like, oh. <laughs> yeah, what if, like, 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 what if we get to the pursuit theme a build up track? Like, <laughs> I remember hearing that the first time we go, ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> it's, it's one of those perfectly time, time, time music tracks for this game that perfectly sediments Ryu's, Ryunosuke's development. Like, yep, he's, he's in it now. I, I, it, also, it also does a fantastic job of revving up the, of revving up the finger point. <laughs> <laughs> Which I, I gotta say, this was definitely, I think, one of the chapters where I, I know uh, I I haven't been as hyped about the music as you guys kind of deal uh, for a lot of this. Uh, like, I think it's good kind of deal, but like, this was the case where like almost every new track that came in was incredible <laughs> in this chapter uh, kind of deal. I love, I love, uh, you know, all, all the character themes. That Prelude to Pursuit was incredible. All the remixes of music coming in, especially like the new Asogi theme, uh, which we'll talk about him in a bit. Um, but yeah, I I really enjoyed uh, Van Zeke's uh, and Ryanosuke, uh in this. Uh, they really got to grow a lot this chapter. We, we, like, Ryanosuke, like, I, like, real like, uh, okay, like, I really like Ryanosuke, and Ryanosuke in case three is, like, so different than Ryanosuke in DGS1. <laughs> like, like, that's kind of why, a kind of part of where I say, like, I get it of, like, that they're, it's a continuation of a story, but it just feels like this game is just on such a different level than the first game <laughs> in almost every way. I can't see them as one game kind of deal. There's, there's such a noticeable quality jump in this one that, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but like, uh, but, but, but like, uh, I have, cause, uh, cause I didn't think about this, but, uh, but those thoughts are, are getting unsealed until you're done with DGS2. <laughs> but, but, uh, but, but like, Ryanosuke is, is, Ryanosuke in this case is fantastic. And, uh, it's just it's just, it's just such a highlight when you see the first like the like the first half of the trial. He's by himself and he's holding his own. Which I really appreciated that. I really like that we had a trial where he didn't have any outside help uh mm -hmm. with him to just show that no, he has he's figured this out at this point, you know. But uh like it is like it is cool. But uh mm -hmm. Cosmo. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, I don't have much to say about Susano because, uh, like, I'm glad she's uh, back. <laughs> you know, kind of deal. But like, I mean, case, case one is essentially her, her, yeah. her entire thing. So, so. yeah, let let's talk Cosmo now because <laughs> he's fully the back biggest in. Biggest goddamn spoiler in this entire game. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness, we can. Do you know oh, how? How do talk more about Cosmo now? <laughs> Patrick, do you know how? How how painful it was to to restrain myself when you were talking about case two. <laughs> I'll just say now it still doesn't change my opinion on case two at all. Like <laughs> that's still near the bottom for me of this whole of DGS is still my lowest point of the series. And whether Cosma dies or not is actually dead or not, I just don't think it's a very fun case at all for how bad. But I'm I'm glad he's back. But if yeah. you, I'll have to see how it plays. 
I don't know how I'm going to feel about it in the long run because there's only two chapters left at this point. So I'll see what they do with him in those remaining two chapters, but. I would say I, now you're approaching what I would technically say is the longest case in Ace Attorney, bar none. Wait, I thought you guys were saying that was case three. <laughs> no, no, I say technically because this case, the four and five are actually one case. Oh, what? You'll, um, you'll find, uh, you will, um, you will see when we get into it. But because of that, that I say this next case oh, is uh, technically uh. the longest. <laughs> I, did, I, did, I was trying to do chapter escape, aren't I? <laughs> to, to just look at the title card. Kind of yeah. Back. <laughs> uh, but. Yeah, so. I guess you guys on uh, Kazuma for. Like, of uh, reactions when he came back, or. Because. Uh, I, again, I'd say it multiple times. It was pretty. Like, as soon as I saw the guy, I was like, oh, that's Cosmo. <laughs> kind of deal. <laughs> they they yeah, are yeah, very I'm... subtle on it <laughs> at all. That is right, it. The, the game is aware, like, yeah, yeah, we know, we know. It's just more so, like, the, the, like come back here. I want answers. Stop dangling him. I want the like, answers. Uh, I, like, I saw the guy appear. I made a joke about it, and then I moved on. Did you even think about, like, like, just stop thinking about whether or not, like, is Cosmo or not, because my focus wasn't on that, it was on the case itself, trying to try to like sort that all out of my brain. So when we get back to it at the end, I just like, oh yeah, okay, here we go. And then we are really happy, I just go, wait, I was joking. I was joking! <laughs> <laughs> I was joking! He's, oh, Cosmo's actually back! <laughs> I... That's... That's that aside, good. that that entire, re that entire reveal scene at the end was... Oh, I love great. that scene. That uh, scene is great. <laughs> Fair. I, I think it also showcased like how how far they come with the with incorporating the 3D elements in that. Yeah, like, like, they, I, I I honestly don't mind that there's not anime scenes. Like honestly, when they can do yeah. stuff like that, it's kind of, it, it actually kind yeah. of reminds me of uh, <laughs> because I've been replaying it of kind of Persona Five of where the the 3D in the game is so good now that it actually makes the anime scenes seem kind of lame by comparison, sort of deal. <laughs> I think it's kind of one of those times when they got their budget cut, but they were able to. Uh, to they were adapt uh, to adapt and make it work for them. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think I... That, that scene also highlights a, a kind of like production difference between like like between like this and like the CG cut scenes in a uh, Spirit of Justice. Oh yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, because a scene that I think about a lot, Spirit of Justice, is a scene where Apollo has a match in his hand. He was a heat like, Oh, yeah, uh, it looks was, hokey was, as hell. <laughs> yeah, because you can totally tell that you look at Apollo that he was specifically designed to be looked at from certain angles. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, 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 he, like, Apollo's design works for certain, like, certain angles. You look at him, like, and, like, like, anything that's not, not those, he just looks weird. <laughs> <laughs> like, but, uh, but, but, but meanwhile, with like uh with all, with all like the character models and designs of this game they look good from any they look good from any they look good from uh for any angle so when they so so like when they move around and want to actually have like 3d cutscenes like that it doesn't feel it it, it, it doesn't feel weird at it, it, like like uh, at all it's just like the animations in this game just feel more natural and it's feel more natural and bouncy than the cutscenes than, than like the uh than the cutscene, the spirit, the spirit of uh, justice. I also think the voice acting in this game is also better than Spirit of Justice. I mean, uh, this is just I this is the so this is the best dub of Ace. Of the, I know it's not saying much, but like, thank God it's actually a competent dub this time. That <laughs> one scene is the one reason why I was so concerned for the dub of this game because, like, <laughs> I, I watched this scene, this first scene in Japanese, and and it, that's what kind of got me for that scene. Like, oh, I, I felt something on that. And I'm like, I'm so glad that I, I, think I, it, I still have like the same I, feeling the, in that. The scene's really well done. It's really well done. Like, like, that was the first time watching the scene in English. I was like, I was like, yes, they nailed it. They nailed it. <laughs> yes, they nailed it. I was so worried. Like, I was kind of worried. I was like, oh, uh, yes, yes. 
But I also, agree. the entire scene, it's its not also just the, uh, the, the, the heartwarming reunion of, of Ka Kazuma, of Ryu, and Suzanne, but it's also, after finishing that game, that, that scene, just the implications going forward, and I'm like, oh, this is getting juicy. I, I yes, need to know. The big thing for me was the professor being Kazuma's father at that point, because... <laughs> That's gonna cause some shit going down in a little bit, <laughs> kind of deal. Yeah. <laughs> you just uh, went and left. <laughs> you see so, uh, kind of, it makes me really think of anybody that had a past in London is that was super suspicious to me. Like, I, I am having super major fucking doubts about Professor Mikatoba. <laughs> like, I think he, he is. Of that, I don't think he's on our side. I really don't mm. think so at all anymore at this point. What makes you think that? Honestly, that he has really been keeping a lot of the information hush-hush. Of that he's been directing uh, Susana to do different actions. And uh, with Kazuma being on that... Uh, that letter, uh, which was probably, which, you know, that letter was probably talking about the professor at that point, uh, then. I, I think, think another, I think another big question for me is, why did, why did Sherlock lie about Kazuma? Yeah, I think it was because of the professor, uh, thing mm. at that point. If he knew Kazuma was a lot, if, if he knew, like, that was his son kind of deal, would just be, uh, like, I can't let, I can't let him get to Britain at all. Because mm. if the right people find out, <laughs> shit's gonna go down. <laughs> yeah. Because like, there are now, because of this case, there are four people of significant interest that pop up, that, that pop up now, that, that we have to get answers from. That is uh, Professor Mikatoba, um, uh, Mr. Mr. Herlock Sholmes, mm -hmm. um, Kazuma, and Vortex. Yes. Vortex if got we, a lot of explaining to do if, now. <laughs> if we look at the timeline, we know Asogi's body immediately disappeared. It's been six months since the first game, and the Mysterious Apprentice appeared apparently three months ago. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> so. Oh, man. Like, uh, this has been such a good case, man. Oh my god. <laughs> so, I I am so excited to see what the rest of this game has at this point, man. Like as a, <laughs> as a patch, we managed to get it to get it done in four sessions. <laughs> <laughs> four uh, very long sessions, to be fair, but Yeah. Uh, and hopefully now we've been we... going for five hours. <laughs> We shall hopefully not have to deal with that again. I also understand why it took college study so long to to translate this goddamn case. <laughs> God. Like, it's not only the long street, but also the fact that they have to translate stuff from from Russian and Ita Italian and French. No, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Are you very rich? No, you're very rich. I'm so sad he didn't come back for another one. I want the voice of again, damn it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> We lost uh, the time. Oh, oh yeah. Before, before I say, uh, I would say that, I would say the Shove's deduction of the quote unquote anti gravity that probably is my favorite in terms of like the stage direction of that. Like the direction of it is great. Um, I still see <laughs> in terms of actually solving it. I think the one from case two is over. Uh, the first one in case two, mm -hmm. I would say, has been my favorite in terms of like the logic. Uh, side of it, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. gun deal. Right. It's like I feel like that one. He was cl he was like so close, but just little details drove him off. Kind of deal. It's not where like something like this, where just it's fundamentally wrong right from the core. Kind of deal. <laughs> yeah. Show him skip. Show him gravity. Anti gravity didn't exist. Get it from. Like yeah, but that direction. That like that stage. That stage. Especially near the end. Well, especially like the, uh, near the end, where they were simulating now, like now Hodo shows that he back to back as they talk, as they talk to her. I was like, 
Damn, this is just so cool. Look at my boy. Look at him go. Like, I think I think one of my favorite transitions is that we go from Sherlock. The light turns off on Sherlock. We go there. We, we, we go to Don Hodo, who is pointing up at the ceiling. The light turns off on him. We turn it up, and we cut to the shoe. It's like, yeah. yeah that's awesome. <laughs> again, again, yeah. they really learned the 3D this time. Uh, for this at this point now. Uh, Oh man, hey. Case three, also, super macy. mercy. <laughs> also, the DLC costumes are cool. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I understand why you guys didn't want me to have them on for that scene at this point. So. <laughs> I, I, like I, I would have been fine until I realized. Oh wait, Naruhoto has that that giant mouse on his right shoulder. That's gonna <laughs> <laughs> the mouse is cute, but I don't want that. I don't want I don't want the clear view of Ryunosuke's sad face, and then you have the mouth. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, but um, so I think I think I think it's time. Uh, anything else we want to say about Case Three, or you know? Uh, hmm. <laughs> uh, hmm. It's a really it's... good. Ca it's a really good case, and uh. Ladies and gentlemen who uh, who are going through DGS2 at the same time as Pat is, prepare yourself. You got more revelations to go through. <laughs> I I think it says something that Case 3 already did its did his job doing a fun, like a really good case, and then they still dropped that bombshell at the end. <laughs> yeah. So oh uh, god. I've been just throughout this entire game, I have just been constantly engaged in every single case this time, and like it hasn't been slowing down at all. I, I'm very thankful that I, I was really worried when we start when we start this back up that it would be the same thing as CTS one again. I'm very happy to say that's not for for me. Oh man, like if it, it, Dread might be fighting for game of the year with this for me, and I think DGS two might take it at this point for my game of the year. Oh. But. <laughs> What about, but what about Big's Open World? <laughs> the fishing. Jason. Jason. <laughs> <laughs> yes. On yes. that note, we're gonna wrap it up here. Wait, uh, one more thing. What's the next time you're playing? Uh, the next time we're playing? Uh, yeah. Next, I mean, if Tevi's still doing Saturdays or we have to figure that out yeah. yeah we'll have to figure it out but probably Friday and Sunday for the current plan most likely uh unless unless of do you think we could do like the two stream uh structure for the sex case do you think or at least the beginning to find out how far we get mm. okay I can. Do you want to? Do you want me to tell you the structure of case four? I guess so. Just so for like planning purposes, yeah. There. Okay. I would say if for a stream, I think you can cut it to at least three parts. There are technically four. There are technically four continues though. Okay. Well, maybe just one of one of them. We do a longer than normal stream or something like that. Uh. <laughs> Gonna do it. I think it's pretty obvious which one which one we'd probably do the longer one for. Alright. Well we'll uh Well uh yeah. yeah, Brandon, actually that might be a good idea is just we just start at six now for the rest of the game. Try to deal. For, yeah. Uh, I think that might be the best way to go about it, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. I think the only the only time we're probably going to be as long as this is probably near the end of the final case. Oh uh, yeah, because that's all. I'll, I'll set outside a longer than normal time for the final case because yeah, <laughs> for for like our <laughs> our final final session because we'll yeah. also have to account for the discussion and all of that stuff. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> no, don't worry, we're, it's not going to be as bad as this this one. This again. Uh, not going to be as bad as V three. I think for it turns out, oh, yeah. like, we went on for so goddamn long on that one. <laughs> yeah. 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 Case 5 of this game is as long as uh, the final case of V3. I can tell you that right now. <laughs> Alrighty. Well, I think it is time we wrap up. Thank you all for watching and death marching with us for 
nearly five hours at this point. Good God. Endure it, stream. Endure it, stream. Endure it, stream. Have a good night, everyone.